Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this Oxford City Council Planning Panel. My name is Councillor Ray Mashiter, and I'm Chair of the Planning Panel. Uh, given the pandemic, only elected members need to be physically present in meetings to make decisions, and so officers of the Council that are presenting to this panel today will be doing so remotely. There are three officers of the Council on the planning side of matters that are present today. There's Mr Shuttleworth, who's Lead Officer for the Planning Policy of the City. Uh, there's Mr Hodgson, who's lead, who's lead Officer for the Development Management of the side of the City. And there's Miss Edwards, who's the Clerk of our Planning Panel. That's OK. Everybody else presenting or giving information from the officers' side today will do so remotely. OK, uh, this meeting will also be streamed live. And you just heard Bert uh, uh, count the live stream in. If you do intend to photograph or film the proceedings today, my only ask is for you not to stop other members of the public from being able to speak freely. That's all I ask. Thank you. And I do have one further request. If you'd be so kind to adhere to the protocols, well, the COVID uh, safe protocols of the building, I'd be so grateful. Thank you. OK, over to the order of business. First, the officers will present their submission to the panel. Second, any registered objectors will be invited to speak. Third, any registered applicants or applicants' agents will be invited to speak. Fourth, any registered ward councillors or MPs or MPs representatives will be invited to speak. Uh, I'll allow uh, 10 minutes for both sides. If there's two speakers, it's five minutes each. If there's three speakers, please divide again. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty flexible around time, so we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out uh, as we get there. Uh, uh, that's for both sides of the argument. Then there's ward councillors who will get five minutes each. Is that okay at the end? Finally, after then, I'll close from your good selves and pass over to the members of the panel for debate. Uh, during that time, we will solely focus on material planning grounds uh, against the aims of the City Council's local and na government's national, local, well, national planning policies. Finally, we will close that and we will move to a, a vote based on material planning grounds. By, I will invite the members of the panel to vote. If there is a motion contrary to the officer's recommendation, then before any vote is taken, a senior officer will, will be asked to advise the panel of the merits of that motion. Once, once that's done, then we'll continue on to move to whatever the motion is to vote on. The vote will include all members of the panel, including myself. In case of a tie, I, the chair, will have a further casting vote to decide the application. I do hope that's clear. Ladies and gentlemen, decisions we've made today, those decisions may or may not please everybody, but I'd hope to feel that you feel when you leave this room that you had a fair and equal hearing throughout the whole of the proceedings. Thank you. OK, members, uh, well, Miss Edwards, uh, are there any apologies for absence? Yes, Chair. Apologies, apologies have been submitted on behalf of Councillors Thank you. Um, would you please read out who is in attendance? Thank you. Yes, the Councillor members present this morning are Councillors Bob Clark, Phil Cusack, Jim Dawson, Neil Reynolds, Phil Trezidern, John Warmishan, and yourself, Chair, which makes seven members. Seven members. Thank you so much. Uh, Panel, are you happy to include part one and two of the agenda with the uh, withdrawal of items 5C and 5F? Thank you so much. Are there any declarations of interest, members? Councillor Cusack? Um, I'd like to declare that I'm a member of the Council of the University of Salford. There is a scheme that is, is on the agenda that's gone through as delegating powers. It's a small project. I've had no involvement in it. Sure. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Uh, no other declarations of interest? Okay, members, thank you. Are you happy to approve the minutes from the previous meeting held on the 7th of October? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, shall we move on to item 5A, which is the first planning application today? Uh, it's pages 17 to 30 on your report. I believe, Mr. Stevenson, uh, you are the presenting officer. I am chair. Hopefully, you can hear me nice and clearly. I can indeed. Uh, Mr. Burt, would you be so kind to uh, expand the screen? Thank you so much. Mr. Stevenson, uh, could you go forward a screen and back a screen just to make sure everything's working? Uh, you have the floor, Mr. Stevenson. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you and good morning, panel. Uh, this application relates to number one, Elsham Drive in Worsley. You can see from the screen there that it's for the change of use of a single family dwelling house to a house in multiple occupation, which would be occupied by seven residents. So this shows the location of the site, uh, site being outlined in red here. You can see that it sits within a wider uh, residential area. Uh, to the rear of the site, we've got the Hilton Lane uh, Primary School. The shaded area in this location here is a uh, recreation route, and a short distance to the northeast of the site is Walkton Town Centre. Again, another slide just to help with context 
for the site. <clears throat> now, as part of the proposal, there are some minor alterations to the elevations of the property, which, which have already been carried out on site. Um, at the top, we've got the existing elevations, and at the bottom, we've got the proposed elevations. So you'll see that there was a garage uh, originally. Uh, that's now been converted into habitable space. In addition, there were two high-level windows serving that garage, and they've been uh, increased in size to full-height windows. In terms of the internal layout, <clears throat> um, this space here that I'm highlighting would be the communal space, providing a lounge, dining area, and kitchen. Uh, there's four bedrooms on the ground floor, and you can see that all of those rooms are a good size, served by a window. And as you go upstairs, there are three further rooms. Two shower rooms also on the first floor with a shower room, uh, two shower rooms on the ground floor, so a total of four shower rooms. And you can just see on the left there the sizes of all of the rooms. A few photographs for the site. So the top left image there, this is number one, Elsham Drive. Coming down to the bottom left image, uh, this is the subject property here. And then two close-up images across the front of the property uh, while works were being undertaken. This slide just shows what information there is available with regard to licensed HMOs in the area, and it shows that there, there are none uh, in the area. And so this would be um, one HMO in and amongst a number of other uh, predominantly family dwellings in the area. There have been um, a large number of objections to this application, which is set out within the officer's report. Uh, there's one from Barbara Keeley MP, uh, objections from Councillor Sharp and Councillor Weir. We've had a series of petitions with a total of 62 signatures on them, and in addition to that, 67 uh, individual letters from residents. And this slide uh, shows, uh, via the red triangles, the location of those people who've written into us objecting to this application. So in terms of the key considerations for members today, um, as detailed in the report, it's not considered that this scheme would have an adverse impact on the overall mix of dwellings in the area or the supply of family homes. Um, HMOs do make a positive contribution towards meeting the housing needs of those requiring uh, low-cost accommodation. The changes visually are relatively limited and are not cause, uh, considered to cause any harm. You'll see there's been no objections from the highway officer, and so on-street parking is considered to be ac uh, acceptable. Uh, uses such as HMOs tend to generate a very low level of car parking. Uh, there's space to the front and to the rear of the property for bin storage and cycle parking. And it's also worth being aware, because it is an important material planning consideration, that planning permission would not be required if the property was being converted to a HMO for six people. So. What we're looking at in many respects is the difference in impact between a six-person HMO and a seven-person HMO. And taking all those matters into consideration, Chair, uh, the application is recommended for approval. Thank you, Mr. Stevenson. Thank you so much. OK, I do believe I have three objectors who wish to speak. Uh, a Miss Thompson, a Mr. Metcalf, and a Mr. Littlewood. Is, is that correct? Who, who's going first? Uh, oh, Mr. Littlewood. Uh, there, is a, there is a handout. Uh, when do you want us to hand them out? Would you like us to do that now? Is that, is that okay? Uh, I, I did read out 10 minutes at the beginning and divide 10 by 3, it's 3 minutes and 20 seconds. But should, should, we, should we say 3 minutes and 30 each? Is that, is that okay? It's, it's, you know, it's a bit silly, is that? But Mr. Littlewood, I, I don't have my notebook, so I'll just want to have. So I'll have to use the back of the paper, sorry. Appreciate it. Sorry, Mr. Lewis. Okay, uh, Mr. Wood, if uh, it's your three and a half minutes, if you'd be so kind to tell us where you reside, it just helps with context of your submission, and then we'll, we'll get over to you as well. <coughs> my name is Ian Littlewood, and I reside at number two Elson Drive with my wife, Marie. We live directly opposite the proposed <coughs> HMO. As I speak to you now, it is no longer a proposal. The structural alterations to this property have been completed and paying tenants already put in place. The applicant has shown and continues to show complete disregard for the panel's decision today, either for or against. 
As I'm sure you're all aware, we have 118 objections against this proposal, albeit we only have a limited amount of neighbours here today. Sadly, due to limited mobility and work commitments, not all were able to attend. However, that doesn't mean that they hold different views on this proposal. <coughs> I'm a retired police officer, having served 30 years with Greater Manchester Police. I serve the Salford community, and not just the area where I, where I reside, but the whole of Salford, and I served it proudly. <coughs> the cul-de-sac that we chose to live in and bring our children up in has been one of the best decisions we have ever made. <coughs> Never in a million years did we ever think that directly across the road from where we have watched families grow up, children play and grandchildren come along, did we expect the council to even suggest that HMO would fit in in what has to be one of the nicest family orientated residential areas that you could possibly want to reside in. Since July 2021, over this period of time, we have witnessed five tenants moving in, although planning permission has not yet been granted. <coughs> it states the driveway can hold four vehicles comfortably. This is nonsense. We've also witnessed a number of visitors to the property who we assume to be partners or ex-partners some turn up in vehicles, again, limiting the amount of vehicle space. <clears throat> I now feel like a prisoner in my own home as I need to close all my curtains in front-facing rooms because ultimately there are now five rooms looking directly into the front of our house, where, as if a family lived there, they, of course, would spend most of their time in the living room, which is offset from ours. As a former police officer, <clears throat> I've seen attended at and ultimately dealt with some of the people that these HMOs can attract. As you can imagine, it is a fear of the unknown. Yes, the property number one Elson Drive is advertised for professional people only. How many professional people rent the property without first paying a deposit? Number one Elson Drive is advertised as no deposit. Has the applicant vetted the tenant? Does he know what professional positions they hold? And it's a well-known fact that professional people move on fairly quickly. And who knows who the landlord will put in place after that. You have a minute left, Mr Littlewood. OK. You have a minute left. I'm sorry? You have a minute okay. left. I know that the council stands for its values, passion, personal responsibility, people and pride. That is what the residents of our cul-de-sac have together. And as you can see from the turnout here today, we are not just neighbours. We are united both here and in daily life because we hold the same values of family life. Help us to continue with those same values by leaving our little haven as single family dwellings. I know we can't resist change forever. There is, a, there is a place for HMOs, but they have no place in our cul-de-sac living amongst our family and elderly residents. Thank you for allowing me the time today to express how absolutely devastated not only we would be, but all of the residents of this community we have built up over the past 40 years. I urge you today, as councillors, to reject this application. I'm, I'm finished, thank you. No, it's okay. I'm, it's, I'm, I'm finished, thank you. Helen just needs to clean, uh, wipe down the surface and then we'll, we'll, we'll get to the next speaker. Is that okay? Uh, the next speaker, is it the handout? Oh right, right. Yeah, it, that, that's why I was asking you. I was asking you if you, if that was for the handout. Helen, would, would you be so good to hand it out? Would that be okay? Thank you. Uh, who is the next speaker, please? Is it? Is it Miss Thompson or or Miss Beckoff? Miss Thompson. Okay, Mr. Thompson, uh, if, if you would be so kind to tell us where you reside, and then it just helps with context of the members. Are, are you a local person mm -hmm. on the local street? Yeah, I live in Reed Rose that, now. That suffice. We just, we just need to understand your context of the submission. Uh, uh, Mr. Thompson, you have three and a half minutes, so whenever you get. Uh, okay. And I'll, I'll turn the sound off and I'll, I'll, I'll let you finish. Okay. Hi. Hi. My name is Jill. I have lived in Elsham Drive for 20 happy years. Elsham Drive has given my family a safe and lovely community to grow up in. The application of the HMO has and will change this. I have many worries regarding this HMO, however, given the timescale, I am just going to outline my key concerns. 
concern number one, people who live in HMOs. We fear it could be ex-criminals, young offenders or drug users. What we do know is that HMO properties regularly attract these types of people. We do not want our community being exposed to drug use, criminality and antisocial behaviour. The property overlooks a school playing field. What impact would that have on the school? We have foster children that live on this street, vulnerable children that have been housed in a safe place away from potential dangers. Has this been taken into consideration? Are you comfortable with potentially putting our children and wider community at risk? Is our crime level going to go up? Unfortunately, where there are HMOs, the crime and antisocial behaviour is at its highest levels. Concern number two, character and locality. There are 12 houses on our small cul-de-sac, all of which are detached family houses consisting of three to four bedrooms. When you buy a house on a cul-de-sac, it's a selling point that offers a safe, closed community of neighbours. This HMO will have an everlasting detrimental effect on the whole area. By moving seven people into number one, who could then potentially share their room with a partner is a massive increase into the amount of people living in our family cul-de-sac. I have paid a visit to other HMOs that are rented out by this developer. Neighbours have made it clear that living near an HMO isn't a nice experience and some residents have been forced to put their houses on the market at a loss just to get away. We have already seen this in our community since this development has started. We shouldn't have to be forced out of our homes. Concern number three, infrastructure. The additional people in the HMO will impact on what is already a strained infrastructure within our community. We have problems with traffic, access in healthcare and local transport systems. The amount of waste that is going to be generated is also a huge concern on the local environment. Are we going to have overflowing wheeler bins, unsightly views and an increase in vermin? My next concern is parking. An HMO will bring additional traffic. The cul-de-sac cannot accommodate additional cars and traffic. There have already been access issues for the refuse collections and the restricted access for emergency vehicles. Additional cars create additional problems. In summary, by letting this development go ahead, you are ripping the heart out of our small community and putting profit above people. The developer is about business and pays no attention to the community. HMOs have a detrimental impact on the community. They belong on high streets, in cities, not in quiet cul-de-sacs. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Ms Thompson. Thank you so much. Okay, I believe I've got Mr. Metcalf next. <coughs> Apologies if the accent throws you. Oh, it's all right, Mr. Metcalf. <laughs> Mr. Metcalf, I, I take it you live on the street too? I do. Fabulous. Uh, Mr. Metcalf, whenever you're ready, it's your three and a half minutes. Is that okay? Morning, ladies and gentlemen, councillors. I'm Michael, and with my wife, Linda, I've lived at 14 Maple for over 20 years. And we are here today to make known our objection to the seeking of permission for the conversion of number one Elsham to an HMO and support neighbours and residents. Why? It would be an unprecedented occurrence within, with regard to this area of residential family homes. It would take a family home, which as I understand, there is a shortage of in an area well served by schools and convert it into what can only really be described as a commercial enterprise so as to maximise as much financial return as possible. The area is, as I would describe, is a little oasis within the urban sprawl and has a good community vibe. So is it wrong to try and protect that? It is normally in effect by the nature of an HMO that its residents are of a transient nature and do not invest in the community in the same way. From conversations with neighbours, other residents, especially the elders in the community, they fear that there will be an increase in antisocial behaviour, so they are concerned about their safety. There is also the prospect of an increase in traffic and parking obstructions. It is said that there is room for four cars, well if they fear 500 maybe. 
However, this is a proposal to accommodate seven individuals and then there are visitors, friends and relations. I have seen that when there is an obstruction, the refuse collectors turn around and leave so no bins are emptied, and not to mention the delaying of the emergency services in those circumstances. It is also a case that landlords can and do move properties on amongst other like-minded people, so what guarantees are there that will be maintained to a good standard? It will probably be said that there is consideration for the community but seeing that work was undertaken to convert the property well before letters went out to residents and with the number of subsequent objections to my knowledge not in favour, there was no consideration of the feelings of the locals and maintain it as a family home and let it out as such, a few of which there are in that area. This is about the money, £500 per calendar month per room by seven, so do the math. This is about what one individual wants and cocking the snoot a democratic process and community. There is currently a nice looking car on the drive, but according to the DVLA, and it's easy enough to check, it has not been MOT'd or taxed for three years. So is this a bit of window dressing which says what else is just a facade and will those opposite have to watch it sit and rot? It is with these reasons, for these reasons and observations that we believe that the change of purpose from a family home to a commercial enterprise would be detrimental for this communal group and we ask you to reject it. Thank you. Thank you Mr Metcalf. Thank, thank you so much to all speakers. I'm sure members will take on, what you, on board what you've said during their deliberations. Uh, the applicant's not in attendance today, uh, so the next speaker will be Councillor Sharp. Okay. You know the drill, Councillor Sharp. Five minutes. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's very unusual sitting on this side of the uh, panel for a change. It is indeed. Uh, over to your good self when you're ready. Very much. First, start off by. Uh, a short statement from Barb Keeley, uh, who's unable to attend today. She's got parliamentary responsibilities. Uh, Councillor uh, Sharp, yes. uh, you, uh, you, can, you can make us, if, if Barb Keeley has asked statement. you to present on her behalf, I'll accept that as two separate five minutes. All right, it's only a short you, statement. That's okay, well, that's what I usually do, so it won't take your five minutes up. So All well, right. let's deal with Barb Keeley MP first. Yeah. For that. So it's, I do not believe this application should be approved on the same grounds that I submitted my written objections. I believe that Elsham Drive is unsuitable, an unsuitable site for large HMO on the grounds of increased noise nuisance, antisocial behaviour and the location being in a cul-de-sac and bringing additional parking issues to a property which is going to have eight households and will create further issues for residents of the cul-de-sac. The extra vehicles parking and turning in the cul-de-sac will also create a safety hazard for children of the residents. I don't, do not believe that this is a suitable site for a HMO and I continue to object to this proposal strongly. Thank you. And then if Thank we you. move on to myself. Yep. Um, so speaking on behalf of Councillor Weir as well, who's indicated she is against this development uh, and is supporting me in writing this, this statement today. Um, but before I do that, I'd just like to apologise on behalf of some of the residents, although there's a significant number behind me, there's a significant number that have been un unable to attend for a variety of reasons that would have liked to be here today, mainly for work commitments and disability, but, and, and foster caring as well, but if it would have been a different time, we probably would have had double uh, in attendance. So, I... I I've been on planning power for a while. I don't think I've ever read, read, read the planning papers in so much depth. I probably could recite it to you with a verbatim. Um, and if I'm honest, I, I wouldn't have wasted my time here today turning up on this miserable morning if I didn't think that this planning application uh, was going to just be approved. Because it, it, it definitely shouldn't be. And if I was sitting on the other side of the table, I'd, I'd reject this outright, like many HMOs have been in the past. Um, I'd like to thank the residents as well for the strong ease and some of the passionate statements. They've all been taken very well, so thanks very much for those. And as the officer mentioned before, um, 
we're not del deliberating on whether it's a six bed HMO or seven bed HMO. Like we are consistently on this panel, we're deliberating on the merits of this application that's here today. It's a seven bed HMO in a family area, a retrospective seven bed HMO because the building work has already been done and tenants are already inhabiting the property. Start with the non-material planning considerations first. So strength of opposition, uh, the number of objections uh, has reached 129, as you've seen already. Um, and in context with other de developments in our area, we've got 750 houses being built on Brackley Green Golf Course, and they've only got 40 objections. So having three times as many for a single dwelling is, is quite uh, substantial, I'd say. Um, contempt for local and national planning guidelines and regulations. Um, the, res the, the landlord has already built the, has already done building works, he's moved people in, and the absolute contempt of not turning up today in the face of such a strong <coughs> objection from residents is, is just beyond belief. Um, and we all know that we, the detriment of HMOs have in our area. Uh, recently in ours, we've had to shut one down on Captain Fulls Road because the crime and all night parties, drug abuse, um, and general antisocial behaviour was so bad and, and we don't want to see another one of them. It takes a lot of opposite time to, to rectify. Um, at the end of the day, it's a family street, it's a close-knit community. Adding a HMO will completely change the dynamic of the street for residents living there. Um, and I'm sure even the applicants would agree that they wouldn't like to live next door to one. But let's turn to the material planning considerations. That gives a context and a flavour of, of the application, but to give uh, the substantive items, we've got MPP F1, MPP 130F. Planning policies and decisions should ensure that development should create places that are safe, inclusive and accessible and which promote health and well-being with a high standard of, of amenity for existing and future users and where crime and disorder and fear of crime do not undermine the quality of life and community, co community cohesions. As is noted in the papers, there's 120 residents writing in, and a large majority of them have said that they're fearful for crime and antisocial behaviour. And, and one MPPF 130F states, fear of crime should not be undermined. There's no mention of people, so the officers have done a really good job at rebutting some of the, the issues that residents have put forward, and some of them are reasonable responses, but there's no rebuttal to that. that was, in there throughout the whole thing and no one put it on the on the screen so as far as i'm concerned that's the reason to reject the application transport you've all got the papers in front of you um, so the pictures that were shown on the screen earlier don't do justice to what what's current uh, and what's presently happening so the bend immediately as you go to the left it doesn't show that it's a blind corner with hedges on it that are, hedges are legal they're, they're at the right height there's nothing wrong with the hedges it's just a blind corner as you go around that junction um, but as you can see from the pictures the parking's horrendous already it's the beauty of having the residents that's so contemptuous that they, they come and give you the reasons to object to a planning plan, planning application already because they've just strewn cars all over the road and yeah, it's causing left council shop <laughs> severe hazard to, to transport and, and anyone using the highway, whether that's a pedestrian or, or a car user. Um, and some of the uh, things that they've put in here, for instance, the uh, distances to the local transport hubs like the train station and bus routes are vastly understated. There's no way you can, that it's 400 metres to the next nearest bus stop, that's just farcical. Um, and, and lastly, on transport, there's a condition that says that. Um, at least four parking stands should be built before the approval of the application and first resident moves in, but we've already got five tenants that have moved in, so I don't know how that one's going to go down. Uh, MPPF 130A, the development will have to the overall quality of the area. For the reasons stated and reasons given up by objectors, objectors, this will not be the case. The overall quality will just decline and bring misery for residents. And then lastly, MPPF 130D, the area has a strong sense of place and change a strong sense of place and any change that's brought about by the introduction of an HMO will vastly degrade the quality and fabric of the area. Um, so take your pick on which ones you want. You've got MPPF 130, which is fear of crime, uh, transport, UDPA8, um, MPPF 138 and MPPF 130D, which are all valid reasons to reject this application. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Shaw. Thank you so much. 
Thanks, Ali. Okay, uh, there's no other ward councillors uh, present or registered to speak to this application, so I'm going to close from your good selves now and open up the debate with the members of the panel. Okay, panel, Councillor Cusack, anybody else? Councillor. Oh. Oh. Councillor Clark. Uh, I, th I think I've le it reached my limit of surnames, and I'm, everyone that I'm relearning, I'm losing another. It's, um, it's oh. honestly, I'm, I'm getting as old as you guys, you haven't seen me a moment. Okay, Councillor Cusack, over to you, yourself. Thank you, Chair. Um, the, there's a couple of things that uh, concern me a little bit about this and, and the officer's report, and I'd like a bit of clarification on that. The, um, the highways uh, statement in the officer's report uh, is very theoretical. It refers to um, the 2011 census figures in terms of average numbers of vehicles at different types of housing tenures. Um, and given that this conversion has already taken place and it is, in fact, occupied, I'd like to know whether highways have actually been down and observed the actual problems and the actual number of vehicles there. This, the second question is I'm concerned as well about the fact that this has already taken place in advance of uh, a planning application uh, and I wondered whether the officers have encouraged a retrospective application or have considered enforcement action against, um, uh, against works that have taken place without planning permission. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Cruzak. Should, should we take the last first? Is, is that okay? Mr Stevenson, uh, was the applicant brought to the table to apply for planning, uh, or uh, were they... Uh, well, give us a bit of the history of how it got here. Uh, not, not that I'm aware of, Chair. Um, I can check in the, in the bag, uh, but to be honest, it's not really a, a relevant consideration in the determination of the application, so I've not checked whether it came in through enforcement, uh, and I've just been passed the notes so that it didn't. Answers that one for you, Councillor Cruzak. Mr. Clements, uh, our highways uh, engineer, uh, um, did, did you catch Councillor Cruzak loud and clear there? I uh, did, Chair. Yes, yes. Uh, would you go through uh, the, uh, the observations that you, you have made about the site and the uh, and the and the cumulative impact uh, since it's been in operation? Um, in terms of the question regarding uh, has an IRA officer been to the site to observe the situation, I haven't actually reviewed this application myself as a member of the team. We don't always go to uh, to every single site that we see a plan application for, so I can't categorically say without asking him whether he, he did visit this one or he didn't. What we have taken on board is, is as he correctly points out, the census data, which is the only publicly available information that we've got for car ownership for properties. Uh, unfortunately, the 2011 census data doesn't include uh, HMO as a, as a dwell type. And therefore, uh, we, we've looked at the varieties that are in there, which is owned, um, privately rented and, and social rented. It typically comes out uh, at 40, 40, 50 percent for, for rented properties, car ownership. Uh, and on that basis, you could estimate that this property um, could potentially have three or four vehicles associated to it. Um, that's just based on tenure type and not property type. If you factor in that these are more similar to flats than houses, that decreases the likelihood of car ownership as well. So whilst, whilst there's nothing that can categorically say that this property would have X number of cars, we, we would estimate that it would generate circa three or four vehicles which we've said it isn't isn't too dissimilar from a four bed property. Yes, slightly more. One one would suggest um, taking that into account the availability of parking. I, and one of the comments made earlier was that the uh, the applicant's statement was that four vehicles could fit on the drive. We we subsequently debated that and went back to planning and, and said we didn't agree with that whatsoever. Uh, they subsequently come back and uh, and acknowledged that it was wrong. I had to say we we. They didn't, they didn't say they were pulling the wool over our eyes, but they, they did say it was incorrect. Uh, and we provided, uh, we were provided with a plan that, that showed that two can be accommodated on the drive. And actually, if you look at satellite imagery uh, on Google Maps, you can see that there's two vehicles clearly on the drive. So we've worked on that basis that if, if we could accommodate two on the drive, you may get an overspill of one or two on the road. Even the third vehicle could block the other two in. 
And on that basis, and also throwing into the mix um, the comment that Anthony made earlier regarding um, planning permission would not be required for a six-person HMO, we did take that into consideration that if six could be implemented without planning permission, there needs to be consideration of, of the fact it could be just one extra room that we're considering everything into the mix. We didn't believe as a highway authority that the impact would be severe on the highway network and therefore didn't think there was grounds for refusal, Chair. Thank you, Mr Clements. Very fair. Thank you so much. Does that help, Councillor Cusack? No. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, Chair. Um, the, the, the highway's uh, position is based on estimates, uh, and the officer has used the word estimate uh, twice uh, in his statement. We don't need to base it on estimates in this case because we can see what's happening. And what I would like to know is whether we know what is happening in reality at the moment or not. Mr. Clements? Uh, as mentioned earlier, without phoning in the highway officer, if he's available, I actually think he's on site at this moment in time, um, as, as we speak anyway. I can't categorically say whether we've visited this site. What we always do with any application, we'll review uh, any complaints we've had in an area from waste management team to see if there's been any issues with refuse collections, uh, any any complaints from neighbours about inconsiderate parking, any applications through the highways task group for, for double yellow lines to resolve safety issues. Uh, and, and that's a standard part of our re review and consultation process. And nothing was flagged up as, as part of that process. So nothing, nothing alerted us to any any untoward concerns of this, this particular site over any other. Thank you, Mr. Clements. Thank you so much. Okay, it's uh, there's, a, there's a frustration here, isn't it, with the... Uh, with the, the, the uh, yeah, yeah, there, the there is. This is not a typical application. It's not theoretical. It's not something that, uh, that we're looking at in the future. It's something that's happening at the moment. And I would have thought it was common sense, if it's happening at the moment, to go and have a look and see what is actually happening. Thank you, Councillor Cusack. Councillor Clark. Yeah, um, I agree with Phil. We're in the real world now. We can see what's happening. This is, yet again, another fine family home in a nice residential area with quite clearly an engaged community who care about their area. It's close to a school. It's got all the amenities for a family, and yet they turn it into a bed sit, a glorified bed sit, which could... No, don't you, No, don't we, Just be careful about we. No, uh, okay. We are not the applicants. Me, then, or the... Yeah. the is that OK? The planning. That, that's all it is. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, right. the, the local authority isn't the applicants. Okay. And we yeah. are sitting... Or somebody the is turning it into a glorified bed sit. We thought, could have 14 people and all the paraphernalia with 14 people. Um, I'll cut to the chase. I'm moving for refusal on DES7, amenity to the residents of it and the, U and, and the local community. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Thank you. Uh, I heard amenity of the existing residents. Users and members. Thank you. Is there any other speakers, Alice? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, uh, well, there's been a motion put on the table. There is the officer's recommendation as well. Is anybody willing to move the officer's recommendation? Okay, thank you, Councillor Tristan. Anyone willing to second the motion of Councillor Clark for refusal on DES 7, the immunity of users and neighbours? Okay, that's seconded. Okay, uh, is there a seconder at all for the officer's recommendation? No, oh, Councillor Crescent? No, okay. So, uh, under the Constitution, if we were to go against officer's recommendation, uh, then we need to bring in a senior officer of the planning team to uh, advise us of the impact that decision may have. So, uh, Mr Hodgson, if you would introduce yourself and then over to you. Thank you, Chair, yes. Uh, Martin Hodgson, Head of uh, Development Management. Um, so, I, having obviously listened to um, residents' um, comments and, and, and views on the application, and obviously listened to, to members in the debate chair, um, clearly, in terms of the uh, development plan policies that we, which we have to uh, assess such an application, um, 
what I'm hearing is that, that the um, provisions in, in particularly policy H1, which talks about the provision of, of new housing, which one of its criteria talks about the provision of high quality uh, accommodation, I think from Councillor Clark is suggesting alongside Des 7 that there, there is the means within the property is, is unacceptable, i.e. it's not of a high standard. What I'm slightly struggling, Chair, with is then um, trying to understand uh, what is meant by the impact on the means of, of, of local residents in the vicinity. The reason I say that, Chair, is um, any, any refusal, any single ground of refusal, um, can, if, if the applicant decided to appeal the decision made by this panel, um, we would have to substantiate and provide evidence uh, to back up those reasons for refusal. So any, any sort of generalised view um, that's vague or inaccurate assertions, um, unsupported by objective analysis, can be then subject to a cost claim uh, at an appeal. So I would respectfully ask the panel if they could uh, elaborate somewhat on the immunity of local residents. Because we, we've heard certain views about obviously parking, because uh, parking, obviously if it's spread about the street, can have in itself an immunity value. We've obviously heard from the highway officer um, that there doesn't appear to be, um, from his perception uh, and analysis, a severe impact, which is, which is obviously the ultimate test chair. So, I think in the absence of some detail around uh, substantiating the immunity on local residents, um, I'd have to advise this panel that the applicant would have a reasonable claim for cost, Chair. Yeah. Uh, Collins, could, could I help you out a little bit? Uh, uh, could we go with uh, uh, have an unacceptable impact on the positive residential character of the surrounding neighbourhood, uh, having particular regard to the potential increase of noise and disturbance, on street car parking, waste management? <laughs> and uh, the population turnovers of, the, of what the dwelling could do, because that, 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 that has an impact then on the, on the operation of the neighbourhood itself. Yeah, Chair, sure. that, that's a... Because I think what we, we're saying is in the proposed... Sorry, Chair, in terms of the local plan, um, the emerging local plan, policy H10, um, talks about those matters, and I think what panel are saying is it, it obviously doesn't comply with those criteria that Chair has just, uh, has just read out. So if... If that's at the core of what members believe in this case, then um, that is obviously trying to then substantiate, or at least uh, elucidate what panel actually means by immunity. So that's helpful, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Clark, would, uh, with your motion, would you take that forward? Yeah, so what, what I actually mean is, is that the, it's the ability for the residents who currently live in that street to enjoy their surroundings and continue as a community and not have a transient population and with all the necessity, all the problems that causes with parking, litter, the lot. It's about the people that live there. At the moment, it's, it, it's community. It's a community street and we need to maintain it and we have to do the right thing sometimes, even if it goes against what the officers say. It's about the community. So if I could give you a little steer, could we go towards more policy H10 than Des 7? And uh, so we, we, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not particularly. Don't need, need to really kick out there. So we need policy H10. Because if we, we just could, let we me just finish yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, well, if agree. we could get policy H10 in there, policy H10 deals with noise and disturbance, yeah. on street car parking, waste management, and policy H10 also deals with that population yeah. turnover and that imbalance within the community. Des Seven doesn't really do that. Des Seven is more on the built environment form, of which the dwelling's already there and it hasn't really much changed. In, but it's the usage inside it, H10 okay. deals with. Yeah, that's 10 minutes. Is, is that okay? So yeah. H10. Yeah. H10. Yep, is that, is that okay, members? Uh, Councillor Womersham, if we did move to the policy being, sorry, the resolution being around H10, are you happy still second that? Yeah, I'm happy to Okay. Uh, Mr. Hodgson, I won't bring you back in. I'm going to go to the vote. Are you, are you comfortable with that? That's fine, Chair. I think I, I've heard what I needed to hear. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Okay, uh, so members, it's been moved and seconded uh, that uh, the application is refused uh, around the merits of the policy H10, which is that the, 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 uh, the, the, the application would have a negative impact, well, it would create noisy disturbance, it would create a, a, an on-street car parking level uh, that would affect the neighbourhood, uh, that, uh, that the waste management would be of great concern to a site that has more occupiers than what should be fulfilled in, in, in what is a, a normal family dwelling. 
and that the population turnover over of the premises itself could reduce, well, would and could reduce the stability of the neighbourhood itself. Is, is, that, is that okay? All in favour of that uh, refusal, please show. Anyone against? <laughs> Any abstentions? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the application has been refused. Thank you so much for your attendance. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a public meeting, so I do have another application to hear. So if, if you could leave quietly, I'd be so grateful. Other, other applicants do need that. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, members, moving right on to item 5B. Miss Sammy, can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can. Have another go. Uh, we have, ooh, we've, we've, we've got the white screen of death, not the blue screen, <laughs> Mr. Williams. Here we go. Say that again, sorry. Oh, okay, just check here. Yeah, yeah this should be by now, yes. Uh, Miss Sammy, can I, the presenting officer, can I hear you herself? Uh, yes, can you hear me? I can indeed. Members, can you hear Miss Sammy? I'm, I'm seeing nods, Miss Sammy. Miss Sammy, could you go forward a page and back a page? Fabulous. There we go. It all seems to be working. Uh, Miss Sammy, you have the floor. Over to your good self. Oh, just before I do bring you in, Miss Sammy, members, uh, it's a miss of me. It's, page, it's item 5B, it's page 31 to 45. And it's page three of your amendment sheet. Is that okay? Can we just check? Sorry, Miss Sammy, just before we get going, I'm just looking at the amount of people that are in the public gallery and the amount of people that I have registered to speak, and it, and it doesn't add up. So, uh, Councillor Greedo, you got your hand up. Is, Okay. Uh, no problem. Uh, and and is, is the applicant here too, uh, Mr. Mr. Ridley? No, I think I think in the interest of fairness of the applicant and the. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. What what we'll do is, uh, Mr. Stevenson, uh, Miss Sammy, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna move to item five D, and we'll come back to your good self. Is that okay? Because we don't have okay, the no objectors problem. or the applicant in the room, so. In the interest of getting a decent hearing, I think that would be the right thing to do. So please step down, Miss Sammy. Mr. Stevenson, could you share your screen and we'll move to item 5D. Is, is that okay? And we'll, uh, members, this is page 59 to 65 of your agenda. Uh, Mr. Stevenson, can I hear you? Yeah, hopefully you can hear me, Chair, and see the slide in front of you for Albion Way. You have the floor, Mr Stevenson. Thank you, Chair. This application uh, is for the erection of a digital advertisement, uh, which is sited on Albion Way, <clears throat> uh, just adjacent to Trenham Place. And you'll see there that it's for the replacement of an existing 48-sheet advert, which, which was removed uh, probably six, nine months ago now. So the red box here shows the location of the planning application site and the image there in the bottom right hand side of this slide shows the previous advert which uh, as I say was on site up until quite recently. There's been one objection to the application uh, which is contained within the officer's report and the location of that objector is at number 50 here, this property. Um, you can see that that property sits uh, shoulder on to the advertisement and the distance between the two is about 15 metres. So this shows the advert that previously occupied the site together with the advert that is proposed as part of this application. And you can see that for all intents and purposes, it's uh, an identical replacement. And this is really about digitizing uh, an existing advert. So in terms of the planning considerations for members today, the site is um, located adjacent to a major highway where adverts are part of the expected urban infrastructure. It's not considered there would be any harm to the immunity of the neighbour, given the relationship and distance between the two. 
you'll see from the report that there have been some works to trees. The majority of those works, uh, bearing in mind this is a council site, um, are being done for good agricultural practice and are not in relation to this advert. However, there is one tree to the rear where the crown is proposed to be pruned back a bit to accommodate this advert. So having regard to those, Chair, it's recommended for approval. Thank you, Mr Stevenson. Uh, I don't have any objectors in the room. I don't have this, uh, the applicants or applicants' agents in the room, and, and there's no board members wishing to speak. Uh, members, it was there before in paper form. It's there now in digital form. It's smaller. It's on the same site, faces the same angle, faces the same way. Council Wormsham. Probably one of my usual moments is that it says Ward, Langworthy. Langworthy Ward no longer exists. I think it's about time we, we got our... Uh, applications updated and it's the same with when you're being notified you know I'm starting to get herbal river style notifications so I think that needs looking at but on the on the application itself I do have a slight concern that is now it's gone digital it is more brightly lit and uh, I think the object trip number 50 might have a bit of a case to be honest uh, my understanding it's LED light and it's played right forward. Oh, right. So it, it won't, it won't, uh, there's no side illumination, it's just straight on illumination. Oh, but is, that's is that fine, okay? yeah. Uh, the, I, you know, uh, the, the ward, the, when, when the ward boundaries changed, the, every, every planning application that was in the system will have been registered with the old wards and that will eventually flush through and it, it, it's going to take six, eight months. It's yeah. just, yeah, it's the nature of the game, so it's, it's just going to happen. But if you see applications that have come in at different bits, like, for instance, Councillor Garrido's here today, and that, that, that application came in after the ward boundary changes, and that, that application is titled in the right ward. Is that okay? So you, you can see it happened from when it was meant to, legally. It's just as a legacy. Is that, is that all right? I know you're holding me to it. No. Councillor Treseden. Can I quickly ask why this was brought to panel? Because um, I'm, I'm quite new, I'm still unsure as to the reasons why things get brought to panel. And if it's possible, can we add a line in the officer's report saying why it was brought to panel? Because sometimes I really don't know. Yes, let, let's do that. Normally, uh, items come to the panel, and it's quite obvious because of the numbers of uh, people objecting, as we saw earlier. Uh, there's, in the constitution that was brought to the full council yesterday, you, you would have seen that what is a delegated application and what comes to panel and it's, it's based on square footage and on the numbers of objectives uh, and types of application because we're, we're considered that with waste applications but this one would have come to panel because it's a piece of council land actually the highway and it's got one objector and i believe the constitution was changed yesterday to two objectors on council land because as you will recall from a few months ago we had a lot of of the uh, heat transfer sites uh, that had one spurious objection and in most cases it wasn't an objection it was just a submission of somebody's comments about it and it triggered it to come to panel and it held back the city reducing its carbon footprint by four months so so members de decided yesterday to change the constitution slightly but i will send you a copy of it Councillor Chesley. i'm sure i have a copy it's quite big but if we can add one sentence to the officer's reckon to the officer's report just saying this is the reason that it was triggered to come to panel. That would be helpful for me, I think. I think that's been heard loud and clear. Is that okay? Uh, <laughs> Councillor Dawson, do apologise. <coughs> yeah, yeah. And looking at this, obviously, the normal objectives would be people who would see the light and shine in the house and distract you, etc., etc. But there's also another implication. Um, is the actual... It could distract drivers when you're coming along, so there's an accident increase risk. And I wonder if, if we've got any data, not just on this side, but overall in the city, have the accident statistics gone up near to these signs? Because it's a little fear that when you're driving along, it, it's a dual carriageway, so it's a fast load, you know, people will go, and as you're looking across at whatever advert, I, I assume that's the purpose of an advertising sign is to draw your attention to it. So when you're driving, it increases the danger. So I wonder if we have statistics and evidence what says... I, there will be, a, there will, there will be a, a 
condition on it so much. Mr. Stevenson, uh, you're, you, are, uh, you seem to be becoming an expert on lumi uh, luminous Luminosity. and looks. <laughs> Luminosity. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Stevenson. That's the word, Chair. Um, just to draw members' attention to condition three. Um, as a council, we had quite detailed conversations with the Institute of Lighting Professionals, which is an independent body that produces guidance on, on such a matter. Um, and as a result of those discussions, we agreed the wording of a standard condition, which effectively sets certain um, luminance levels between sunrise and sunset, uh, depending on the size of the advertisement. But it also uh, links back to guidance produced by the Institute of Lighting Professionals um, to ensure that uh, we, we, these advertisements don't cause uh, an amenity harm to the area or cause a highway issue. Is that okay, Councillor Dawson? It's, it's very much on our agenda and we're regulating what we can. Yeah, it's the actual... Uh, to, if lights turns did happen, what powers would the local highways committee have to say that this should be now be removed or changed? <laughs> it's just that assurance and that confidence that if it did turn out to be an accident increase area, we could do something about it. Well, we, yeah, we do. Well, if it becomes a nuisance, we have a statutory, we have some statutory regulation that we can take other, other actions through different departments. Uh, so, yeah, is that okay? Okay, Councillor Kuzak. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Just, just, just one, one question. I, 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 I get the, uh, the sign being the same size and replacing um, uh, an existing unilluminated sign or a past unilluminated sign. I just wonder technically, are, are there any light effects on the rear of the sign that might affect the properties on Trenton Place? Uh, Mr. Stevenson, uh, yeah, I think Councillor Cusack makes a very valid point actually. I, you know, I, was, I was about to say, come on, this is a sign, let's move forward quite quick. We have had some new signs put up on Trinity Way and the, the backs of them are, are, have numerous LEDs and quite bright. Uh, could we could we look at having this one covered at the back, or have we already covered that? Um, it's not something I've experienced personally, Chair, um, but we certainly could um, perhaps add a, add a condition to ensure that we get some details to prevent any uh, light spill, if you will, from the back of the advertisement, just to give members confidence about that issue. Yeah, let's do that. Thank you, Councillor. Can I move that? Yeah, no problem. Yep. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that, Mr. Jensen. Right, so uh, it's been moved to add a condition uh, to, to uh, cover the back or in some way make sure that there's no uh, light display disturbing residents from the rear of the, of the panel, uh, the advertising panel. But it's not been moved or seconded for the officer's recommendation. Is anyone willing to move the officer's recommendation? Councillor Kuzak, anyone willing to second it? Councillor Reynolds? Okay, so it's been moved and seconded for approval with the extra condition to uh, make sure there's no light spill out the back that might disturb neighbours and protect community. All in favour of that, please show. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, application's been approved. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, oh, Councillor Hamilton. Well, can I lend you a glasses? Oh, right. Okay. Uh, but by the time we get set up, Councillor Hamilton, please come and take your seat. I'll be so happy. Okay, so we're going to move right on to the next application now, members, because I believe we have everyone in the room now for f item five B, uh, which is on six saddle coat. Uh, Worsley, it, pages 31 to 45 of your panel agenda. It's page three of your amendment sheet. Miss Sammy uh, is our presenting officer, and I believe Miss Sammy is the case officer. Uh, Mr. Williams, would you be able to yeah. Oh, thank you. Miss Sammy, could you go forward one slide and back one slide? Council Hamilton, please take your coat off, and we won't get started until you're ready. Okay. Is that okay? <laughs> okay, so, uh, Miss Sammy, can, can I hear you yourself? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. you went, uh, your slides went forward and back, so that's clearly working. Uh, Miss Sammy, you have the floor. Thank you so much. Okay, so this application is at Six Saddlecote in Worsley um, and is for a proposed single storey rear extension, side extension, um, and the erection of a fence, um, and the raising of garden, and filling of hardcore. The application relates to a detached dwelling to the east of Barton Road, accessed off of a residential cul-de-sac known as Saddlecote. 
This is an oblique aerial image showing the application property. As you can see, there is substantial tree cover to the rear of the site. This photograph shows the rear elevation of the property, including the existing conservatory and the existing single storey side projection. The proposed extensions includes a single storey rear extension, which would uh, be of a similar footprint as the existing rear conservatory, and a single storey side extension to the rear of the existing side projection. The applicant is proposing to convert the existing garage to living accommodation. Um, this does not require planning permission, but has been included with the application. As you can see from these front elevation plans, um, the garage door would be changed to a window. These rear elevation plans show the proposed flat roofed rear extension and flat roof side extension. This photograph shows the existing relationship between the application property and the neighbouring property number four. The side extension will project from this wall to a depth of 2.2 metres. This photograph shows the existing relationship between the application property and the neighbouring property number five. The footprint of the proposed extension will be similar to that of the existing conservatory, which is pictured. This is an excerpt from the site plan, which shows the proposed landscaping works. This includes the laying of a small area of hard standing, a fence along the dotted line and levelling of the garden. Um, there'll be photographs following this which will make it a bit clearer. Um, this photograph was taken from the footpath to the rear of the application property. The fence shown is an existing fence adjacent to the footpath. The application fence is set back in from this and is not visible from the footpath. This photograph is taken from across Barton Road. The application site here is predominantly obscured by existing vegetation and the fencing along the public footpath. Um, some of the works have already been carried out, so the application is part retrospective. This photograph shows the rear garden from the rear of the application property. In this photograph, it's possible to see the hard standing, the fence, and the area proposed to be levelled. This photograph shows the hard standing more clearly. This photograph shows um, the existing land level differences along the southern boundary. So you can see where the applicant is proposing to raise the land levels by approximately 800 millimetres to create a level garden. This site plan shows the trees on or near the site. The blue line shows the canopy of the trees and the yellow lines show the area recommended for root protection in the arboricultural report, which was submitted with the application. The proposed extensions will fall outside of these areas. The proposed hard standing, which would be here, has been reviewed by the council's arboricultural consultant who has advised that this is unlikely to significantly impact the trees, particularly considering the small percentage of the overall root protection area covered. The arboricultural consultant has raised no objections to the land level changes, subject to a condition to ensure that the level of land compaction is kept to a minimum and monitored throughout the building process. In summary, <coughs> The proposal will have a limited impact on the character of the area. The extensions comply with Salford's supplementary planning document on house extensions with regards to the amenity of neighbours. 
no objections have been raised by the council's arboricultural consultant subject to conditions um, there have been several uh, concerns raised by neighbours and members of the public and these have been summarised in the officer report pages 37 to 39 and we've also received an amendment report after the panel agenda was published um, which you should I believe have in front of you thank you thank you Ms. Sammy very clear and concise I know that was your first time and thank you so much do appreciate it Okay, uh, moving over. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm, I'm very sorry. I, I, I know the, uh, the, the objections to this application and the applicants to this application uh, I've got here after the proceedings started. Uh, I do read out what the order of the uh, business will be. Uh, so just, just to reiterate that to your good selves, uh, what, what happens is the officers will present the planning, app uh, the planning application as it's just happened. Uh, there are two officers, one uh, Mr Shuttleworth from Planning Policy, uh, and Mr Hodgson from Development Management Control. Um, Miss Edwards is our clerk. Everybody else is an elected member uh, making decisions today of the planning panel. And all other advice from planning offices comes via the, uh, via the internet and the, the, the live stream. Uh, after now, the next section of the meeting would be to invite the objectors to speak. And then after that, it would be to invite the applicants to speak. And after that, it will be to invite any ward councils or MPs representative to speak. Uh, both sides, the objectors and the applicants, will get 10 minutes each, and the ward councillors or MPs representative or MP who, will represent, uh, who are present would get five minutes each. Uh, so if I could ask if there's anybody on the objector side wishing to speak today, if you could just raise your hand, I could give you the right allocation of time. So I have two speakers who are speaking in objection, so it's five minutes each, is that okay? Uh, uh, Helen will by all means help you out. Miss Edwards, I think we might have some handouts, so we might need uh, who's going first from, from process of elimination? I believe it is it Mr. Taylor? Mr. Uh, yeah, Taylor. Yeah. Hi, Mr. Taylor. No problem. Uh, I've, I've got, I've got uh, for, from experience, three, I believe you might have. You've got, some, you've got a handout, no problem. Well, let's get that handout sorted first, and then before you get started. Uh, Mr Taylor, you, you stay there, sir, because we have a COVID protocol, so we've, we've got to... Sorry about this. It's, 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 so, I've only got one copy. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. In the order. Yeah. Yep. Uh, no problem. You, you can get them out. And <laughs> just need, I just need our lead planning officer to see it on the development management side, and then we'll, we'll hand it out. So, are they different or the same? Okay. It only takes 30 seconds, don't it? Oh, that's only one copy. Okay, so we'll, we'll send it round. Okay. Is that okay? Uh, and the other, the other piece of paper is that's the handout. I think with the one with that one. Can I, can I just ask the question of uh, Mr. Taylor? The, um, the submission here from I think treeadvice.com has that been submitted formally uh, by you as part of the application process, or is this the first time that this um, document is, is being uh, produced or seen by anybody on our Sorry, side? Can you? I can't really hear you very well. My, my wife might know better. Okay. Oh, on a second, and I can take Mr. Taylor's submission if you have a chat with Mrs. Taylor. Is that okay? Yeah. Mr. Taylor, we're going to take your submission, and Mr. Hodgson's going to have a chat with Mrs. Taylor. Is that okay? Yeah. Mr. Hodgson, uh, you need your phone call. Is that okay? Thank you. Uh, sorry, Helen, we just need to sort this out. What, what we'll do is we'll take Mr. Taylor's submission, just in the interest of getting on with the meeting. Is that, is that okay, members? Okay. 
Oh, yeah, so, yeah paper, paper does fly, but it doesn't always fly where you want it to fly, does it? Okay, uh, can I turn that microphone off? Thank you so much. Okay, Mr. Taylor. Uh, yep, uh, it's your five minutes, sir. If we could know where you help, if you could tell us where you reside, it would just help with context for your submission for members of power to understand best. Uh, I'll give you a shout at four minutes. Uh, whenever you're ready, sir, uh, please do get started. Okay, well, it's. Um, we live in, in, a, in a quite an attractive uh, an est um, estate uh, on the outskirts of Worsley Village, where all the houses are of uniform appearance, black and white houses. And I know there's been um, regulations to prevent, uh, to keep the uniformity of the estate. So we don't want a lot of building work that's not in character with the estate. And uh, one of the main problems with our um, bungalow and number six, if you look at the first photograph, I'm sorry I didn't get more copies, just one of those things, the top, if you look at the two, the, the first picture the top picture the, um, there's two bungalows there's a bungalow next to a house and I've, the top one is, is, some, is, is another part of the estate where the, there's a proper gap left between the bungalow and the house and there's enough room for each to have their own path. Uh, and now what they've done uh, in, our, in Saddlecote is that to, after planning permission was, was granted by the council, Torres put in an extra house. So this has created all sorts of problems in that there's, uh, there all the houses are about to be squeezed up. There's more problems with parking. And when you look at the, the gap between our house and number six, compared with the top photograph, you can see it, it's much narrower. And, and, and number six have lost their, their path to the back. So there's only a three foot gap between our house and, and number six. But as you look at the top photograph, where, which is on a different part of the estate, it's an identical bungalow next to a house. And there's, um, uh, there, there's a lot more room. There's about eight foot between, uh, between each, per, each one has their own path. So that's created a problem. And, and because there's such a narrow gap of only three foot between the two properties, we um, uh, are worried about any building work being done on our side uh, uh, of the, of the, uh, on the party wall near our property, because we're, we're, we're very close. And if there's any building work done at the back, it's going to impinge on our light from our from our lounge, so so that was the that, that was the first that was the first thing I wanted to say. Uh, now we, we recently we we've had access to the to the plans. It's only kept him to have come onto the onto the website recently after the um, 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 rejection process had been closed, and we noticed that the the the, the, li the living room has actually um, uh, got a. a, a um, a shower and a toilet and a, and a sink in, in, in it and, and, the sh and the toilet is against our party wall because we have a party wall um, where the path is and we're wor I, I was worried about how we to get plumbing to um, into that, sh into that si sink and toilet without any pipe work coming onto our path because the path between the two properties uh, is our path that we've had uh, since the houses were built, and uh, we wouldn't want, we wouldn't allow any overflow from the from the toilet uh, that was against the party wall to be coming out onto our path, or, or and where were the drains going to go as well? So that was my second point uh, about how they're going to build it without without um, without the um, impinging on our pathway, and, and just the third the third thing I. Um, I'd like, uh, if you look at the photograph, the, the second page, you'll, you'll, you'll see how close the two properties are. There's only three foot, and, and up where the eaves are, it's only two foot six. So that, the, the second photograph in, in, uh, sort of illustrates how close the two properties are. And then the, the last page of photographs, uh, the other concern I've got is the um, drainage at the front because already um, the properties of, um, neighbouring properties have um, paved over all the gardens and, and um, 
So uh, our garage is the lowest point of, of the um, driveways. So any water that when it may, when, it, when there's a downpour, it all flows down into our garage, and the sink and the drain, uh, which is in front of our garage, is just cannot cope anymore. And if you look at the last page of photographs, you'll see how when when it's flooding, that all, all the water's coming down into our garage. Now I know when the um, um, Mr. Rid, uh, Ridley first moved, uh, uh, just under a year ago, he, he tarmacked over all the uh, front of his um, driveway, and, and it's not, not helped. And since then, we've had two major floods into our garage. You have, you have a minute to left, put... Mr. Taylor. Sorry. Sorry. You have a minute left. One oh, minute. yes, okay. So we've had to put pan, um, sandbags. On the last photograph, you'll see sandbags we've had to put on the garage, in front of the garage, to prevent flooding. Uh, now, I'm, what I'm concerned about is if they're converting the garage into a living area, they'll um, uh, brick up the garage door, and possibly uh, there'll be even more water running down because there won't be a problem with their garage flooding. So there'll be... Uh, will, will the conversion into a living space... Um, cause any, even more water to flood down into our, into our garage. Um, that's uh, basically the, the, the three points I wanted to, to, to raise. Thank you, so, Mr Taylor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. I'm sorry I've only got one set of photographs. I should have, if, in hindsight, I would have produced more, but it's one of those things, isn't it? No problem. Mr. Well, we've all got to see them, Mr Taylor. We did. Thank so, you. Thank you. Just... Okay. Uh, Mr. Taylor, we're just, just waiting for uh, Helen just to bike down. Uh, yes, please hand them out. Are we, are we there, Mr. Hodgson? Still waiting for him. Ah, no, not quite yet. I responded to him earlier. There you go. Mrs. Taylor, we, we, we want to hear what you have to say, so please do come forward. Mrs. Taylor, please do come forward. We, we, we want to hear what you have to say. We, we just need to sort out what the documents are. Hello. <laughs> Just give, us, just give us one minute, Mrs. Taylor. Is that okay? If you need to stop. Just stop. Let help, please, Helen. Thank you. Miss Taylor, we'll just wait till everything gets handed out and then we'll get you started. Is that okay? Okay, Mr. Taylor, uh, Mr. Taylor, you have your five minutes. Over to your good self whenever you're ready. Okay. Well, um, we are talking about Worsley um, Tree Protection Area Group 6 of beech trees. There are nine of them, and um, they've been there since 1968, and they've been carefully preserved by all the residents around, and they form a source of tranquility when people walk down by the brook. Now, what I think isn't being taken into account is these are iconic 80-foot, um, 24.4-metre beech trees. They're 150 years old, and um, they, they have an enormous root protection area that spreads over the gardens of four and six, and uh, as well as number five. And that's why they have such big gardens to protect these trees, because um, the safety issue is an enormous problem for us and the responsibility if um, this concrete development that has been done 
where it is not permitted in the root protection area is allowed to persist or even be prolonged and spread further apart. Um, I can't agree that it's a small extension, a small development because it is very substantial and I've got pictures of it and I don't believe it's just for a garden shed either because of the amount of expense that was and concrete that was poured into it at the time. Uh, it must have cost an awful lot and for that and for the floor of a garden shed. I don't know if I would be allowed to just circulate these pictures of what the, the um, plan is like. The plan is like. Thank you. <clears throat> So as we haven't had, um, we've had an arboriculturalist who has produced, he's also produced a, a book, he's um, of a very high calibre, he's an, a consultant arbor, arboriculturalist who's produced books, he has done a lot of work on our trees as opposed to the half page um, council consultation arboriculture report. Uh, that's been done and he's very interested in the trees and he's convinced that they've already been damaged in their root system by the concrete work that's been done but he can't assess it properly and he says no one can without the design specification now um, that um, he said he says uh, we the officer doesn't refer to it but the council arborist does say it was sought but not provided and for us to assess the safety of these trees we really need that to be produced before a decision could be made about um, pa passing this for planning permission um, um, I'd also like to say that I think our bungalow has not been Mar bungalow is very small, but you can't see that in the picture, the photos, because it seems to have been cut off from the consideration of the effect on our amenity. Because we're so close, um, number six towers over our small bungalow, which is in a corner. It's very overbearing already. It's quite, and it would be quite claustrophobic if we got these two extensions also right close to us with their flat roofs which are not in character with the rest of the houses there's nowhere there that has flat roofs on an extension so we feel it would be, make us feel very hemmed in but you can't um, visualize that because it's not considered the property that is considered are not the nearest neighbors number five saddle coat is at some distance and um, their amenity is considered, but for some reason we don't, we don't consider ours has been looked at um, and thought about. We're also worried about the bathroom. Mrs. Sighted. Taylor, you have, you have one minute left, Mrs. Taylor. Oh, one okay. minute left. Um, so, yeah, three neighbours have actually complained very locally, and other people from the 24 complainants about objectors. Um, were mostly from Worsley Village because they were concerned about what was happening to the trees. And so we really feel that, you know, this design for a complete assessment of what is going on with this a development that shouldn't have been permitted, would not have been permitted, uh, we need to have the, we need for our peace of mind to have the design specification provided by the applicant or the concrete design company. Thank you, Mrs. Taylor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I've heard from the applicants, uh, and, uh, sorry, uh, so the objectors side. Uh, now I have the applicants and applicants agent side. Is, is there a speaker? Is it, is it Mr. Ridley? It is, sir. Hi, Mr. Ridley. Uh, Mr. Ridley, uh, there was 10 minutes for the objectors side, and so there will be 10 minutes for the applicants and applicants agent side. And as I said earlier, if if there's more than one speaker in that 10 minutes, I just divide the time by them speakers. So uh, you have 10 minutes to speak because that's the allocation of time has to be equal to all parties. So 10 minutes to yourself, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
with regard to the presentation from planning, there seems to be no issues, and we've gone through this since March of this year, checking and double checking. We don't think there's any impact on our neighbours in flooding. Um, we've done everything within the, the building guidelines, and I've really not got very much to add after the presentation from the council. Um, because as far as I can see, it ticks all boxes. The minimum impact on, the, on our neighbours is minimal, as there's already an existing conservatory there, which has been demolished, a new structure being put up, which would be a living area, not a conservatory. With regard to the fencing and the concrete and the, the raising of the garden, we were a little bit, got a little bit excited, I think, in the summer, so we put fencing up and prepare for a, a shed. Yes, it's, uh, it seems an over elaborate concrete area for a shed, but the future plans are once that is built and the garden's levelled, there'll be a pathway coming from that back to the house. So and it was all going to be in print creek, hence the reason why it looks a little bit more expensive than just popping a shed on. The concrete was set on um, just crushed, run, stone. There's been no impact to the ground. We've not broken the ground to, to raise it. It's just a, effectively a concrete flag we've prepared. Some say it's a slab. It, it can be contributed. It's just to sit the shed on. The shed's been ordered, paid for. It should have been erected two weeks ago, but we've delayed it pending this, this meeting. And it's to replace an existing one that's on the, um, on the patio now. With regard to the distancing from properties, the properties are the properties. It's, I don't think we're going to have any impact on that. Um, we've only been there to, what, less than 12 months. We moved in January last year. We knew they'd been planning before. Um, and there's a very similar existing outline. And we've employed an architect to stay within the planning laws and regulations. And I think we've, we've done that. I can't really add much more. It's a, going on. It's, we don't think there's going to be impact on flooding. We think we're slightly lower than the garage next door. Um, the toilet's in the e extension. If it goes ahead, the toilet, we just can make it a room, but we put a bathroom in it, an ensuite. We'll go back into existing foul drainage. Apart from that, ladies and gentlemen, I haven't got much more to add to it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Billy. Thank you. No, thank you so much. Okay, uh, that, that's everybody from the applicants and applicant agent side. Is that, is that okay? Uh, and now I do have a ward council room, uh, Councillor Guido. You know, you, know the, you know the drill better than me, Councillor Greedo. It's your five minutes whenever you're ready. Is that okay? Right, okay. Um, th there are various issues here, and I think they've been pointed out very well uh, by the two objections you've heard from this morning. Uh, but I want to add to that, and I think in terms of the trees, we've got additional information which has been provided by a specialist company, uh, which seems to be totally at odds. Uh, with the information that we've so far uh, uh, has been included uh, in the application. And I think because of that, I think this does deserve further investigation. And I would like to ask uh, the panel to defer this, for this to be investigated further, as there is a conflict uh, between uh, the professional body and the, uh, uh, and the uh, advice given to, uh, given to our officers. So that's, that's the first point I'd like to make. Uh, hopefully you will consider that, Chair. Um, secondly, we're faced again with certainly a partial retrospective application uh, where, you know, a part of the work has already been started uh, without any regard uh, to, uh, to the planning uh, panel or planning application process. Uh, it's, been re we've referred to, it's been referred uh, to the uh, concrete hard standing uh, in the back of the garden. It's a very, very substantial hard standing for a shed. I must admit, when you look at retrospective applications, uh, one really has doubts as to whether this is just a hard standing for a timber shed. 
I think we ought to turn that into account. Coming back to the uh, trees, uh, the trees, as you've, I think, already seen on the screen, form a very substantial screen, uh, particularly to the rear boundary of the property. And you'll have noticed, in fact, again on the plan that was shown earlier, uh, that the bound, rear boundary uh, faces or is adjacent to uh, Barton Road, an extremely busy road, uh, and uh, uh, which uh, uh, causes already considerable amounts of problems uh, for local residents. And the trees uh, do give some protection, uh, you know, from, from that busy road. And for that reason, they ought to be retained. And I say retained because I know they're not pro proposing to actually pull down any trees, but the work which is proposed to be carried out uh, gives some concern as to the damage that could be caused to the roots of those trees. And we've seen this happen in other parts of the area uh, where damage has been caused and then we lose the trees. And once we've lost a patrol tree, doesn't matter how many new trees you plant, uh, you've lost mature trees uh, forever. So that's a really important point, and that goes back to what I was saying about the further information that's being provided. When this development was built, and unfortunately I remember it being built uh, about 30 years ago or, or thereabouts, uh, it was very much built as a model village. Um, and for anybody that knows the development, you'll know in fact that it's quite unusual in the ways it's been designed. I suppose I would probably call it higgledy-piggledy. Uh, you know, properties sort of intermingle with each other. Uh, you've got much smaller spaces uh, between properties than you would normally have. Um, and this was an attraction of the design at a particular time. As the applicant pointed out, uh, there are no flat roofs on the development. Uh, but because they were originally built relatively close to each other, then any addition to those properties uh, actually uh, makes that situation even worse. Uh, and I think if I've just asked the panel to, to take that into, into consideration. Um, the final point I'd like to make is relating to parking. And I don't know whether you actually saw a plan at the beginning of the actual little cul-de-sac in front of these houses. Uh, but the cul-de-sac itself probably only takes about one car at a time. Right? The parking relies very much on people having the garages to at least take one car. Uh, and a relatively small drive in the front of the garage, and I'm going to uh, I finish off now, sir. So You've got I'm, one minute. I'm now running out of time. Uh, so this, would, this uh, development, by actually uh, uh, taking away that garage, will have a considerable impact uh, on the parking in that cul-de-sac. It's already very difficult, and this would make an already difficult situation that much worse. So for that reason also, uh, I would ask that you actually refuse the application. I come back to finally uh, uh, the conservatory has been referred to as uh, well just replace the conservatory. The conservatory is a glass building. You can see through. It doesn't block light from anybody, whereas the extension is a solid extension, uh, which obviously uh, is, uh, imposes itself on the surrounding properties. So I'd ask you also to take that into account. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Greer. Thank you so much. Okay, I have no other board members uh, present who wish to speak, or any MPs, MPs representatives, so I'm going to move over to the debate now. But just before I do that, Mr Stevenson, uh, can I bring your good self in? Uh, we have had a, 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 a private arboriculturist report presented to the panel today. Uh, has the, has, has the uh, officer team uh, seen this, and was the, uh, the council's arboricultural arbor consultant aware of this report, and has, has he, she, taken it into account? in their deliberations for the report today from the officers? Um, in short, yes, Chair. Uh, we've had a quite high number of uh, representations from Mr and Mrs Taylor next door, uh, including several reports from their arboricultural officer. Um, the applicant, of course, also submitted an arboricultural report with their application, and all of that information has been independently assessed by the council's uh, expert arboricultural officer and his advice is contained within the report chair and is it my understanding is correct is that the slab that is in situ at the moment is actually smaller than the proposed slab in the planning permission um, no no the, the slab that's been shown on the photographs is the slab that is to be retained 
Um, there's no further slab. All the, all the would be would be a levelling of the garden, so there'd be some importation of material, which I understand is is intended to be from any demolition rubble from the conservatory to to backfill, um, and then that will be levelled as as garden area. Okay, thank you, Mr. Stevenson. Okay, uh, members, anyone wishing to speak, or is anyone uh, okay? Uh, members, it, 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 well, there's a recommendation by the officers for approval of this planning application. Is anyone willing to move the officers' recommendation? Okay, is anyone willing to second that? Oh, sorry, Miles, I work out. Okay, it's been moved and seconded for approval. Uh, all in favour of that, please show. Any abstentions? Anyone against? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the application has been approved. Thank you so much for your attendance. Uh, the next application is 5E. It's, five, it's 10 past 11 members. We do have a member of the public who's wishing to speak. Mr Ahmed, uh, my members have been sat here. We normally break at quarter past 11. Uh, they've been sat here all morning. Is it, is it okay if I give them a comfort break and we start again at half past 11? W would that be okay with yourself? We do have tea and coffee and biscuits, if you'd like them, if I could buy you off of that, if, if so would that be okay? Okay. Mr Williams, would you be so kind uh, to uh, adjourn the live stream and that we will return members at 25 past 11, so you get your 15 minute break and we hear this still in the first earlier section. Is that okay? Thank you so much. Yes, Mr.
Thank you, Mr Williams. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Councillor Ray Mashter, and this is Salford City Council Planning Panel. Uh, we did run a session this morning, and we do have one application running over into this session. Yeah, and you notice this session started five minutes early, but uh, I can assure you no applications that have been advertised for the 11.30 session will be heard until after 11.30. It's just we have one application that we need to hear from the earlier session uh, right now. So we'll just quickly go through the order of proceedings. Uh, the elected members uh, need to be present to make decisions under the changes in the pandemic legislation, but officers of the council can present remotely, and that's what will happen during this meeting. There are three officers of the council present to help us with the, with the running of the panel. There is the uh, lead officer, Mr Shuttleworth, here for planning policy. Uh, there's our lead officer, Mr Hodgson, here for lead officer for development management. And then there's our clerk of our panel, Miss Edwards. Is that okay? Everybody else, the officers wise, uh, who are helping us planning wise, are presenting via the live stream. Can I just ask that if you do intend to speak or film the proceedings, not to stop other members of the public from speaking freely and feeling that they can do so. And over to that, uh, uh, could you just please respect the uh, COVID safe uh, rules of the building? I'd be most grateful. Thank you. Right, over to the order of business. First, the officers present the application. Second, any registered or objectors will be present will be invited to speak. Fourth, any registered applicants, applicants' agents will be invited to speak. And uh, lastly, any, any registered ward councillors, MPs, representatives or MPs will be invited to speak. I'll allow ten minutes for both sides and that will be five minutes for each speaker if there's two speakers. If it's just one speaker, it will be ten minutes for your good self there. Finally, I'll close from your good selves and open up the debate with the panel. During that time, we'll only discuss things that are material to the application in planning policy of national and local government policy. Finally, we'll close from that and we'll move to making a decision, which then a motion will be, uh, will be put to the table uh, and will be voted on. If that motion is contrary to the officer's recommendation, then a, a senior officer of either or from the policy or from the development management side will be brought in to explain to members the impact of what that motion might be which would be contrary to officer's recommendation. All members will vote at the same time on that particular motion whenever it comes. And uh, if there is a case of a tie, either chair have a further casting vote to decide the application. I do hope that's clear. Ladies and gentlemen, decisions we made today, I do hope that when you leave this building, that you feel that you had a, you had a fair and equal hearing right throughout the proceedings. Thank you so much. Okay, members, as I say, we're carrying over uh, 5E which is on page 67 to 93. And I don't believe it's on your amendment sheet. And Mr. Williams, you are the presenting officer. Good morning, Chair. Can you Good hear me? Good morning, Mr. Williams. I can. Could you go forward a slide, back slide? Just bear with me one second. Fabulous. Mr. Williams, uh, I can hear you loud and clear, and uh, you're flicking back and forth, and so you have the floor. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, panel. Uh, the application brought to you today uh, relates to the formal, uh, former Irwell Valley campus uh, off Blanford Road in Salford. Uh, it's for the erection of 21 houses and one apartment block comprising 24 apartments and the retention of the tree of knowledge, which is a grade two listed. Uh, please note that this application is also accompanied by a separate listed building consent for works to the grade two listed structure. So the application site lies within a mixed use, uh, predominantly residential area uh, nearby Charlestown. It's formerly served as a school and latterly as a campus for the University of Salford. Uh, the site has now been largely cleared uh, with the side elevation of the building retained in light of the grade two listed mural, uh, locally known as the Tree of Knowledge uh, located in this area here. Uh, the site maintains uh, vehicular access from Coniston Street off of Blanford Road with a narrow frontage onto Gerald Road itself. Uh, further to the north, adjacent to Gerald Road roundabout, lies a uh, Castle Airwell development. And for the benefit of uh, councillors, I've marked on here the location of the single objector to the proposed development. Uh, to the east lies a residential area, uh, whilst the south also lies adjacent to an established industrial area. Uh, the western boundary is formed by the playing fields associated with the Albion Academy. Uh, this slide provides uh, an aerial view uh, of the application site um, with, uh, with it looking south with the listed mural uh, in the centre here with it on its social supports. Um, as you'll note, that the site is bound to the right by an established tree line 
beyond which lies the Albion Mill. And of course, as you can see here to the left is the existing residential development. In terms of site photographs, the northern picture here provides a view of the site upon Gerald Road itself, uh, whilst the bottom two pictures here show the vehicular access um, and also the local uh, vernacular of the area, which comprises uh, predominantly Victorian terraces. Uh, the bottom left uh, provides a view of the listed structure here, um, which is protected by fencing. So in terms of the post development, uh, it's, this seeks permission for the construction of an apartment building uh, facing onto Gerald Road itself, comprising a mixture of one and two bedroom apartments, with the rear of the site comprising uh, two, three and four bedroom houses. Vehicular access will be gained, uh, or sorry, retained from Coniston Street, which leads to a shared car parking area for the apartment residents. Um, and a community square in front of the restored listed mural. There will also be a pedestrian access gained from Gerald Road to improve connectivity and promote integration with the surrounding area. As can be seen on the proposed site plan, each dwelling will be afforded either one or two car parking spaces, uh, spaces with sufficient movability and visibility to ensure pedestrian and highway safety. Uh, the proposal does seek the felling of two trees with the retention value of C and U. Uh, these trees are, to, are marked blue with a recommended uh, condition attached to the gra any grant of permission of approval for their replacement. And it also seeks uh, the retention uh, of the tree of knowledge as indicated here. In terms of the proposed mix and tenure, the proposal will be 100% affordable with a varied uh, provision ranging from one bedroom apartments to four bedroomed houses. In terms of uh, the proposed uh, vernacular of the development, uh, you can see on the proposed street scenes here, uh, the architect has endeavoured to create a varied street scene whereby a, a contextual analysis undertaken demonstrated that uh, a development comprising a mixture of two and three storey buildings was commensurate with the overall scale and massing of the surrounding area. Um, also, whilst the fabric first approach has been undertaken to maximise the ther thermal performance of each property, this has not significantly affected the design quality. Um, bespoke house types have been created, which large penetration and decorative brick insets laid in Flemish bond to provide articulation to elevational treatment. As can be seen on this side, the varied street scene has been has been retained to add visual interest. But most importantly, the bottom drawing illustrates how the uh, how the listed mural will be preserved in its current position. The exact method statement for uh, its preservation has yet to be confirmed, uh, given further structural evaluation is required. Um, however, it is the intention for the structure to be retained in its current position, yet restored and protected on its existing supports, which will be reclad. Uh, the submission of a method statement is recommended at condition 23 of the panel report. This next slide just provides illustration of the proposed elevations to the apartment building itself, uh, which is a similar design approach has been undertaken to the elevation of treatment, which corresponds with the brick detailing under a predominantly pitched roofscape. To accompany the submission, uh, the architect has provided some CGIs, uh, which provide a good indication as to how the proposal will be viewed within its media context, in particular how the setting of the listed structure will be enhanced through the creation of this square, which links into the surrounding roads. In terms of key considerations, uh, the proposal represents an efficient use of previously developed land, which is surplus to requirements for educational purposes. It is located within a sustainable urban environment and seeks to deliver a broad mix of affordable housing to meet the local needs of the community. Development has been is to be constructed in a fabric first approach to improve the energy efficiency, and it also represents an attractive and high quality residential development. Importantly, the tree of knowledge will be retained in situ and restored um, with the proposal seeking to improve its setting and therefore its significance of, uh, sorry, the retention of the significance of the designated heritage asset. The amenities afforded to future occupants and those of adjacent neighbours will be uh, as considered to be acceptable uh, and also um, the proposal benefits from a biodiversity net gain of 9.65%. 
unfortunately, the applicant has demonstrated this time the proposal cannot uh, make any contributions towards uh, open space, public realm or education. Um, and also one letter of representation has been received, which is summarised within the panel report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Williams. Thank you so much. OK, uh, I do believe we have an objection in the room. Mr Ahmed. Mr Ahmed, thank you so much for your patience this morning. Uh, we, we try and give the members of the public the majority of the meeting time. And as you see, that the consequence of that is that we do tend to overrun when we, when we give over 50% of the time to the members of the public to speak, because we're committed to hear the members of the public. Mr Ahmed, please come forward and take a seat. Mr Ahmed, as I read out at the beginning, you, you have 10 minutes to speak. Is, is that OK? Fabulous. More than enough, I think. Oh, no problem, Mr. Mr. Harmon, if you could just tell us where you reside. Uh, it just helps members with the context of your submission and understand where you're coming from better. Is that okay? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I'll do that. Uh, just, uh, if I, I don't want to forget something. Uh, can I just... Uh, yes, it's, it's you something, take your time, it's something uh, additional. I would like to ask, uh, there is a bike shed uh, on the road, on, on Gerald Road. Uh, I would like if somebody could consider actually removing that since uh, since the day that it was put there uh, no actual bike has ever gone into that shed and it's, act it's just an obstruction on the road uh, that's just a side issue uh, mr ahmed i will take that on thank you is that okay because <laughs> if it's not being used i know a place where we can make use of it so we'll, we'll maybe on this development okay. in the middle of it <laughs> You've already started a fight now. I think there's two ward councils one in their ward now, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's never been, it's never been used. Okay, on to this planning application, Mr Ahmed. Uh, your ten minutes, is yeah. that okay? So, my name's Gulam Ahmed. Uh, I've got a small business on Gerald Road, uh, right next to the corner, uh, right next to the roundabout, uh, which is in the middle of Carriages and uh, Martins, the bakers. Uh, <laughs> my... My objection to this is that the, the, it's next to the roundabout, and that roundabout has uh, five roads leading onto it. And at various times during the day, because there's five roads leading onto that roundabout, and it's very close, it's, it's very close to this to this development. Even without the development, there's a lot of traffic that builds up, especially in the morning and, uh, and around five, six o'clock. <coughs> uh, and I, I can only think that by uh, putting up another potentially 50 houses, that, it can, that it's only going to increase the congestion on, on that, partic that particular area. The traffic can be really bad. Uh, you're looking at you're looking at, you know, you're looking at over 15, 20 minutes of waiting in, in, in traffic just to cross that roundabout, which I'm sure you, you'll have noticed uh, if you ever if you've ever been there. Uh, and one of the other reasons that there's a lot of congestion around that area is because it is a residential and a commercial area, so so. You, so when both of them are mixed, you, uh, the, the, the problem just uh, becomes, it becomes more. Uh, and, <coughs> and because of that, I don't... The, the, roads around, the, the roads that are built around that area, they're not... They, I, I don't think they're wide enough or to accommodate additional traffic uh, or making way for additional traffic to come onto there. Uh, the, uh, for example, Gerald Road, Gerald Road, uh, at certain at certain times, is just a traffic jam, even without this development. And and the other roads adjacent to that roundabout are similar. Uh, I think that's it, really. <laughs> I think it's just the congestion element to which, which, I've, I've, uh, which I've got an, obje an objection against, really. And also, I do feel <coughs> that 24 apartments uh, on that stretch, I, I think it is excessive. I don't think there's that much space 
in order to put overall 50 houses. So that's it, really. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Ahmed. Thank you so much. Okay, I don't have any other objectors present in the room for this application. Nope. Okay, so I'll move on to the applicant's reference agent side. Uh, Mr. Lee, are you speaking today? Ten minutes for your good self, Mr. Lee, whenever you're ready. Is that okay? Thank you. Um, good morning, I'm Andrew Lee, I'm Head of Housing Strategy at Salford City Council uh, and part of my remit is the delivery of new affordable housing including both direct delivery and also working with partners including our registered provider partners. Uh, I want to wish to speak in favour of the proposed development and why we're looking to develop this site. Uh, Over Valley forms part of the next phase of the Council's direct delivery programme. Our aim is to increase the delivery of affordable housing in the city and to help meet the city mayor's uh, priority to deliver truly affordable housing. Um, as you're all aware, uh, there's a scarcity of both affordable housing and homelessness continues to be a major issue for residents in the city. Um, and I, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of the sort of position, the figures, but in terms of some of the latest information, uh, last year in 2021, uh, four and a half thousand households presented as homeless to the city council and that was an increase of 12% on the previous year, and is part of an annual increase that we've been experiencing over the last 10 or so years. The numbers in temporary accommodation continue to rise. Currently, we have 350 households in temporary accommodation, and that's an 18% increase in the past six months. And one of the issues we're experiencing is having insufficient properties for people to move on to. 6,000 plus households on the council's waiting list, and on average, there are 99 bids per property advertised in this area. And that's above the Salford average of 86 bids per property. And for houses in this area, we're getting 129 bids per house uh, that's advertised on Salford Home Search. So the proposed scheme will deliver much needed affordable housing, including the 21 houses and the 24 one and two bedroom apartments. And the house types have been developed with known housing needs in mind, including the four bedroom homes. So in particular, there's a real pressure for four bedroom homes. There's very little supply of them and demand significantly outstrips supply. On average, it takes eight years to get an eight bedroom house. So eight bedroom house, eight four bedroom house, sorry. Um, so the delivery of four bedroom houses as part of this scheme will, will help towards uh, meeting that need. We've also, we've also included uh, a number of wheelchair accessible units, which includes uh, a one one-bedroom apartment and two two-bedroom apartments. And again, this is in response to housing needs in the city and a very limited supply of wheelchair accessible accommodation. And again, in terms of numbers that come available, in recent years, sometimes we only had one come available in the whole year, and in some years we've had no wheelchair uh, apartments become available. So again, just to, that's sort of the context of some of the housing need in the city and some of the things that we're trying to, 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 to deliver. The other thing that we are also experiencing as well is that within the existing housing stock, the built existing housing stock, the numbers of properties that are coming available for relet is falling. So again, in 2020, uh, just over 1,100 properties came available for reletting. And that is, again, is a downward trajectory on, on the number of properties that are becoming available. People are staying in their properties longer and not moving on. Whilst I accept there has been some new affordable housing in, in the area, particularly at the Charlestown development, which is not that far uh, away, the Riverside Charlestown development, there's currently no affordable housing on the nearby Castle Irla site. And so this will bring much needed affordable housing into, into the area. Uh, as you're probably aware, the council is very keen to set an example around building high thermal, low carbon uh, homes. And uh, these homes will be built to very high thermal efficiency standards with an emphasis on a fabric first approach and with no gas in the properties. And again, this supports the council's ambitions to reduce carbon emissions in the city 
and to go help the city towards being a carbon neutral by 2038, but also helps to address fuel poverty for residents. And again, the city is setting a benchmark for developers and its registered providers around environmental sustainability. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, Mr Lee. Thank you so much. OK, there's no one else from the applicant application side. OK, so we'll, we'll open up the debate, members. Uh, just before I do bring you in, members, uh, you know, uh, thank you for your submission, Mr Ahmed. Uh, you know, I think members are very well aware of the traffic levels across our city everywhere. Uh, the, the testing planning really is, is that this site was a previous school and then it became a, a university used building for the arts, uh, so entirely surrounded by a car park. And if you look at it in plain planning terms, the numbers of vehicles going to this site will be less than the current uses it has now. So, and that's how you need to weigh it in planning terms in reality. Is that okay? But that is not to undermine what Mr. Ahmed is pointing out to us. We are very aware of the congestions that we are suffering across our city. It's the, uh, it's the symptoms of having a successful city and also living uh, next to main arteries that feed the inner city, the inner conurbation of, well, the inner city of a large conurbation. Uh, wards on the outskirts, the immediate outskirts, suffer the most, uh, as we know, who represent inner city wards. Okay, I'll give you my lecture. I have seen Councillor McCusker's hand, I've seen Councillor Kuzak's hand, and I've seen Councillor Warmish's hand. Uh, is that okay? I didn't do it in alphabetical order. I saw it in visual. Councillor McCusker, over to yourself. Thanks, Chair. <clears throat> yeah, I, I really welcome this, this development. and it's, it's exactly what the city needs in terms of um, creating truly affordable housing to meet the Mayor's ambition. But also, lead, should lead in the way, really, um, you know, the fact that these houses will have no gas to them, um, you know, high thermal properties to uh, ensure that we don't have um, people living in fuel poverty. You know, I just think this sets a, a real positive example for the rest of the developers uh, across the city, both our social and private partners. Um, so I welcome it. I, I do understand, I, I regularly go past that roundabout. So I have. Um, I have every sympathy with the objector, but what we really need to do is to reduce the amount of vehicles on the street. We need to get our trans public transport system sorted, cheaper, more efficient, and linked up. Um, and hopefully the, uh, the works that we're taking towards at a Greater Manchester level um, will contribute towards that. That's it, Chair. Okay. Can I formally move it, by the way? Yeah, I've done now, Councillor Kuska. Thank you so much. Okay, I've got Councillor Kuzak, Councillor Warmson, anybody else? Uh, thank, thank you, Chair. It, it's, a, it's clarification, uh, actually, I'm seeking. Uh, who is the applicant? Um, uh, and that, the answer to that question might mean I need to declare an interest. Oh, it, it, I, I believe it's the City Council. Uh, is is it? Trust. Let me just find out. It, is it the Broughton Trust That's or correct, is, it, is it the City Council's housing company? I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I've got a clue. Mr Lee, who's the applicant? It's a city council. It's a city council. So it, it's not a Dereve site, is what I'm guessing at. Uh, it's not a Dereve site, Mr. Lee. No, the applicant is not a Dereve. Thank you, Chair. Okay. I, don't, I don't need to declare an interest. Then. Oh, is that okay? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Wamsham, and then we'll move Thank you, Chair. As a, as, as a ward councillor, I echo the words of Councillor McCusker. I think this site needs to be developed for many years, and to be able to have something like this built on that site is fantastic. Uh, certainly for me as well, being able to save Alan Bryson's Tree of Knowledge artwork uh, is great because so that's been there since my childhood really. You know, I, I remember when that was Irwell Valley School, Cromwell School, uh, and so to see, to see that piece of art, art saved is, is great and I think the more pieces of public art we can have in Salford, the better. I would say a couple of concerns is, is the site access. I think certainly look at Blandford Road. Uh, I think that's going to be the only actual site access and it is a terrace street. So I do think that we've got to make sure that the neighbours are looked after. Uh, and also while the works are on site, we need to be aware that there is a school next door and that it's right next to the playing fields and the playing area. So we need to make sure and take that into consideration uh, I think what Mr Hamad was saying is right about, about the traffic. It is a nightmare at times. 
But I think, as Councillor Massetta has said, it is one of the main arterial roads, uh, and so the, the traffic volume is, is going to be sort of quite increased at times because it is a cut through to the East Lanks and the motorways, etc. Uh, and just, just, I totally agree with Mr. Hamid. That bike shed is just a waste of time. It's not been used since day one. So anybody who wants it, please come and get it and take it away. Ms. Armand, you, you, you can take it from me, Councillor Hamilton, I will bring you in. Ms. Armand, you can take it from me, that in between Councillor Womish and myself and Councillor Tresidon, we're going to knock our heads together and sort that out. So if, if someone doesn't want it, I'm sure, I'm sure either the Keys Ward or Otto Ward wants it. Uh, Councillor Hamilton. Thanks, Chair. Uh, include me in that fight, because I'll have it as well. <laughs> um, uh, we need it as well in Blackfriars Trinity. Um, yeah, I want to echo what's been said by Councillor Warmisham. Um, having used to be the councillor for that area, I am really familiar with Blanford and all the roads. And I know uh, the residents have had issues before when there was some building uh, and they didn't be, in the past they didn't really feel listened to. Uh, and I was on site hearing what the residents had to say. So uh, I'd like to echo what Councillor Warmisham said. Thank you, Councillor Hamilton. And then Councillor Dawson. Uh, just to get clarification on the thermal efficiency, the affordability of the house. Um, I welcome it, but it's great improvement on thermal. But it's the caveat of the no gas supply to the house. So what I want to know is, how can you put pound notes on this? How much will it cost to the tenant because to be affordable, you have to be able to pay the gas bill or the electric bill or the water bill or what you. So that's all part of it, not just the simple, he classed the house affordable in rent terms. It's all the other running costs. So how, many, how much does it cost to heat this building in a year? Is it the equivalent of what a gas, because if it's, if it's electric, electric per kilowatt hour is far more expensive than what gas is by a factor of six sometimes so to get even the thermal efficiency it could be costing them another thousand pounds a year to heat the house so really i would like it in very simple terms yeah what is the predicted it pound in a year it, it's warm and light yeah it's I, I, I get where you come from. It might not be material weight that we should be taking into account. Rather, we yeah. might have to just put yeah. up with the fact oh, that it, it just nice we, we might have to put up with the fact that it, it, it meets the requirements that makes it affordable housing. Yes. And as and we it, know, there is a, a long list that makes things affordable housing, and there's a long list of what is defined as an affordable house. Uh, so, Mr. Williams, uh, what, what's been the uh, what, what's been the hurdle here uh, in in terms of uh, what it, what it, to, of what affordability is the, uh, these houses are trying to meet. Uh, thank you, Chair. In terms of affordability, and, uh, you mean thermal performance? Yes, please. Uh, yep. uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't actually have that information to hand. Um, what, what uh, essentially, what's what the applications, what the applications proposed was a fabric first approach, which means that the um, the the walls uh, are, are thicker, generally are, are much thicker, and they also have uh, increased insulation internally. So the idea around that is that actually you won't need to um, put your radiators on um, for as longer periods than, than some other houses which have less uh, thermal insulation. So the idea is that you only use, um, you only put the radiators on, etc., at certain periods of small periods of the day, and then that will actually keep the, the entire property warm throughout the day. So that's that's really the idea behind the fabric first approach, um, is ensuring that um, that uh, the the envelope of the building um, is sufficiently robust to ensure that the heat remains inside the property. Okay, thank you, Mr. Williams. Thank you, uh, 
Councillor Dawson, this is what we're going to do. It, it, we, we can't give it weight today with this decision. So what we're going to do is, Mr Lee, is it possible through the lead members of Housing and Planning, can we set up a, uh, a, a briefing for how, how, how affordable and environmentally aware the future housing sites like what the council are sponsoring, can we give a briefing to all the council members of that so they have a firm understanding of how affordable these are? Councillor McCusker, I take it you're, you're on that subject of what I've just raised. Yeah, it's just to quick, quickly come back. <clears throat> Currently, across the city, people are building houses that are going to have to be refit, refitted um, in order for us to be able to meet our 2038 target. Um, you know, there won't be any gas going into buildings in 2038 across the whole city. Um, so it, it, it feels a false economy to say because of the current gas price, which is trebling currently, um, to, to, <clears throat> to say let's carry on putting gas in. It, it's just a false economy for the city and for the individuals in those properties. Thank you, Councillor. This debate is for another room, another place, and Mr Lee's going to sort that out for us. Thank you, Mr Lee. Okay, members, it's been moved for approval. Is there a seconder, Councillor Tresiden? You indicated to speak. You did. And I got Councillor. Okay. Um, well, just to, to add to that debate very briefly, apartments don't have gas either. Presumably since the Royal Morgan gas explosion of the 1980s or something, so you can make the same argument there. Uh, my question was really for clarification. I think it's going to be quite a simple one. Is the public square going to be genuinely public? It is going to be public land and not private land, right? Yeah, uh, Mr. Williams, uh, I believe it's not a gated community and that it's, there's, uh, there's a, a pedestrian access way that will always be 365 days a year, 24-7, open from, uh, from is it Jeffrey Road? And then there is access from Blanford Road, always open and it's not gated. That is, that is correct, Chair. The intention of the public square was to ensure that um, there was sufficient integration uh, and connectivity with the surrounding area, um, so, that, so the community square will be, will be public for everyone. Fabulous. Okay, members, it's been moved and seconded for approval. What's not to, to like about this application? All in favour, please show. Ladies and gentlemen, the application has been approved. Thank you so much for your attendance. Thank you, Mr. Howard. We will sort out that cycle thing, and thank you, Mr. Lee, for sorting out that briefing. We really do appreciate it. Okay, moving right on, members. Item 5F. Note 5F has been withdrawn, so that one's gone. 5G. Cherry Tree Court on Kiwi Street. It's pages 135 to 150. Councillor Clark, thank you so much for your attendance. Do appreciate it. Uh, Miss, Miss Edwards, just before we get going with this next application, we'll just do a bit of housekeeping, shall we? Uh, I believe we have one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight members in the room. And those members that are present at the moment are Councillor Tresiden, Councillor Kuzak, Councillor Warmersham, Councillor McCusker, Councillor Hamilton, Councillor Reynolds, Councillor Dawson, and Councillor myself. Is that right? Fabulous. Now we know we've, now we've just done the housekeeping. Is that okay? It's just today we've got members moving in and out. Some members need to go early, some members are coming in late, so I need to keep it right. So, uh, Mr. Catley, I believe you're the presenting officer. It's page six of the amendment report, members. Mr. Catley, can you go forward a page and back a page? I can. There we go. Over to you, good self. You have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, good morning, everyone, just about. Uh, so this is a, a full application that has been submitted by Guinness Developments Limited for 63 affordable dwellings on land formerly occupied by Cherry Tree Court, which is located off Churchill Way in Pendleton. This is an aerial image of the application site and the surrounding area. Um, until recently, the site was occupied by a 17-storey apartment block, which you can see there, uh, surrounded by car parking. However, this building is currently being demolished uh, to relieve the site for redevelopment. Uh, you can see that low level housing surrounds Cherry Tree Court on three sides. To the south, on the opposite side of Churchill Way, is land that benefits from outline permission for new housing as part of the Pendleton Master Plan development that was first consented in 2012. Uh, this is just a a two-dimensional uh, location plan for the site um, and it's noted that Salford Crescent Station, the University of Salford and Shopping City are all within walking distance of the application site. 
These images show cherry tree court from the surrounding streets before work on its demolition had commenced. So this application proposes to deliver 63 units of affordable housing to partially replace the 96 apartments lost within Cherry Tree Court. The building will follow a broadly similar footprint to the building that it replaces, uh, an orientation that enables an efficient use of land. There would be 47 one bed apartments with the remaining 16 units providing two bedrooms. This mix is designed to meet a specific need for affordable housing in this part of the city and has been accepted by officers. All of the ground floor apartments would benefit from a private garden area that also provides a degree of defensible space. You can see some of those there. Uh, and two units at this level would be designed to be uh, wheelchair accessible. The site itself would continue to be accessed via Kiwi Street, which would lead to a, a car parking area um, with space for 26 vehicles. Uh, visitor cycle parking would also be provided just there, uh, and an area of communal amenity space would be provided to the west of the apartment block. The height of the proposed building ranges from four to eight storeys, uh, which is significantly lower than the previous Cherry Tree Court Tower. Uh, the massing steps down as it moves away from Churchill Way. The design is deliberately simple with interest provided through pattern brickwork and a fenestration pattern that incorporates deep window reveals. A buff multi-tone brick has been selected as the principal material for the building with a contrasting brick used on areas set back from the main facade or to create panels that complement the wider fenestration pattern. These CGIs better display the step form of the building and its recessed areas from all sides. They also show the proposed uh, parking areas. Um, they also show uh, the amenity area um, and the view from Churchill Way there. Three letters of representation, uh, one of which is an objection, have been received in response to the application uh, with the comments raised by local residents summarised on page 137 of your agenda packs. No objections have been raised by consultees and overall the development is considered to make a positive contribution to the quality of affordable housing in the city and as such the application is recommended for approval subject to the conditions listed within the officer report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr Ketley. Uh, I'm just looking through my attendance list. I don't have any objectors present uh, who would like to speak for this application, but I do have Mr Kershaw, who's the Applicant's African Agent. Are you, are you speaking, sir? Oh, please come forward. Uh, you, you'll just need to press one of the silver buttons on the microphone and it'll make it red. There we go, sir. Uh, your 10 minutes, sir. Thank you. Um, good morning, uh, everybody. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, panel. Uh, thank you for giving Guinness the opportunity uh, to speak to you all this morning at your planning committee. My name is Ian Kershaw. Um, I work for Guinness, uh, one of your housing association partners overseeing new development within the North West. We hope you can support our new exciting development, which will deliver much needed affordable housing, which will benefit the city of Salford and the local area. Previously, a 1960s outdated 17 storey tower block was situated um, on this site, which comprised of 99 one and two bedroom uh, apartments. We've looked at various option appraisals when we've brought this uh, development forward. Um, one, of, one of those was initially looking at uh, a lower density scheme and we, we felt um, given um, um, the amount of housing need within the area, we had to go back with um, a relatively um, dense scheme. Um, the block, uh, the current block is being currently demolished and it should be vacant in the new year. And we're currently proposing that the new development, uh, which is in line with this submission, uh, comprises of 63 one and two bed new build um, apartments. The benefits of the new development when compared to the old um, tower include, it's a, it's a really highly sustainable location. Um, we're building on a similar footprint to what was there previously. Um, one of the big pluses is the new development only extends uh, to 
eight storeys and then steps down to five and four, uh, which is considerably less than the previously 17 storeys which dwarf the skyline. The new scheme is more energy efficient uh, when compared to its predecessor and, and again will be promoting a fabric first solution uh, which includes uh, no gas. It's, it's more sustainable, um, it includes purpose-built ground floor uh, bicycle store within, within the building uh, rather than um, an add-on. So we, we do feel residents will, will use that because it will be more um, secure and within that space we'll, we will have electric scooter space as well. The scheme will also incorporate electric vehicle charging infrastructure. It will also include two specific wheelchair designed ground floor apartments <coughs> in line with Salford need. Um, the new scheme also has a more contemporary and modern design and it will be more secure than its predecessor uh, which includes secure car parking as well as input from secure by design in the scheme design. So sub subject to your support and approval, we hope to be on site uh, hopefully from April of next year. Um, this, this may slip uh, because we're looking to procure at the moment and, and the, the tender market is, is quite hot at the moment. Um, but once on site, uh, we're hoping it, it will take around about 18 months to build out. Um, so as far as cons consultation, we previously have issued um, a newsletter to the local community um, outlining the demolition and possible new build. Um, so the local community have, have seen a similar scheme, albeit not, not the scheme on show, show today. So we've wanted to keep local people in, in, in the loop. Um, once we have a contractor on board, uh, we, we will go back to the local community um, outlining uh, timescales and, and what's happening so everybody is in, in the loop. The plan mix of one and two bed apartments has been worked up with Salford's um, housing department who, as you all well know, highlight unprecedented demand uh, within, within the area. And just to confirm, this proposal is for social rented um, scheme, which again, there's very high demand within, within the area. Um, so with regard to the development, we're really proud and excited um, to be able to um, show this to you today um, and we hope you can um, support it. Um, just finally, with, with regard to, um, I have seen uh, letters of ob objections and I would like to add, um, I think one of the letters um, talks about why couldn't we face on to Churchill Way and basically um, we've, something we did look at um, early on but turning the, the the build 90 degrees with issues to do with uh, massing and overlooking distances um, and so on so so there's technical issues uh, with regard to that i think there's been some comments on uh, cycle storage um, but like i said we we are introducing a purpose-built cycle store within the development which we believe will be successful um, and we have previously issued um, newsletters to the local community and we have kept them in the loop with, with regard to the demolition. Um, and then as far as car parking, I think there was a comment about um, maybe too much car parking. Well, I believe it is below Salford's um, standard. <coughs> and then I think there may have been a comment about overdevelopment, but like I said, at the moment, it's 17 storeys and we're bringing it down to um, eight, eight storeys. So that, that's me. Thank you very much for inviting me today and I hope you can support it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kershaw. Thank you so much. Uh, there's no one else on the African staff of agents. Councillor McCusker, anything on it? I was just going to ask a, a question uh, of, of the developer's representative. Uh, when we get into the debate, I'll, get, I'll bring you in. Okay, okay. sorry. I've just got to make sure I've got... I've just got uh, sorry to be overly bureaucratic, but I just need to keep to a structure as I am. So I will, you, you will be the first speaker, and I won't charge you any extra. Uh, Okay, so there's no one else from the African African Agent side. I don't have any ward councillors in the room. I'm going to open the debate for the members. Councillor McCusker. <laughs> it's just a, a quick question. It, uh, uh, again, it's presuming there's going to be a change in the law uh, regarding e-scooters, because currently uh, an e-scooter can't be used on 
public highway without the permission of the owner unless it's a um, on, under the Department of Transport scheme. So is, is that, you're anticipating a change in the law which will mean the people who've got e-scooters in the storage area um, will be able to ride them out the door. Just, just to bring the officers up to speed, because I know they can only pick up the information from the microphones. We were just discussing uh, about the, uh, the scooter parking uh, and why the applicants included that uh, where they have done. And uh, from what I could just gather, that it was to do with safety, also uh, and to do with just site, better site management, really, from what they've assessed from other sites that they manage. Is that a fair reflection, Mr. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Wumsham, uh, I said it earlier, but what's not to like, so over to yourself. That's, is, again, as a ward councillor, I welcome this development. Um, just going to say, as a ward councillor at the moment, e-scooters are the bane of my life, so I'm concerned that you're trying to put a storage in, cherry, in the old cherry tree court. Now, what I would say is, is that this is most welcome. Uh, I think, we, you know, we are in desperate need of more housing in that area. You know, the, the loss of the 17-storey block was sort of a, a huge concern but I think when you look at what's going to replace it, uh, it it's really good and, and needed in the area the one plea that I would make though to Guinness is that you do manage it well because we have had issues with the Guinness estate in the past in that area so I really do think that you, you need to look at your management and to make sure that it is managed well but otherwise I, I welcome this and, and it's again another good scheme for the ward and uh, I'd make a plea to, to gather housing from the PFI to get on with the work on the old Windsor site. It's been vacant for nearly 30 years now. I didn't know you were that old to know that long back. Oh, that, yeah. so <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. Do you have Councillor Hamilton? Yeah, Councillor President and then Councillor Hamilton. Yeah, yeah, I very much welcome this. My only question was why we didn't go a couple of floors high. It's, I mean, presumably there's a change in what we want to, the area to look like, but in fact, it was a fairly rhetorical question, if I'm honest. Yeah. I, I take it you, you felt it was tall enough for the model to offer residents a, a decent amenity, or? Thank you, Mr. Kershaw. Uh, is that okay, Councillor Dresden? Uh, officers, I know you can only pick it up from the microphone, so uh, Mr. Kershaw, the applicant's agent, or, or the applicant himself, uh, just, just divide to Councillor Dresden the, uh, the reason of the height and the design theory behind uh, why they got given the height it was at. Is that okay? Is that a fair reflection of what we said, Councillor Dresden? Is that okay? Can I move on? Thank you. Councillor Hamilton. Thanks, Chair. Again, I'm going to sound like Councillor Warmsham's echo this morning. Um, I, I, I would be interested in following their management um, going forward. I, 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 think, I think overall I think this is going to become a conversation that is going to become very relevant in the city in other forums, definitely, uh, about management of sites, uh, especially as the city more and more sponsors 100% uh, affordable housing sites uh, across, across different places. So, yeah, management of spaces isn't just for private sites to, de to deal with, or public sites, it's, it's, a whole, it's a whole mixture together to make a whole neighbourhood and the community. I agree with you, Councillor Hamilton. Okay, members, I'm happy to move this application, because, uh, is anyone want to second it? All fabulous. So, all in favour of the officer's recommendation, please show. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the application's been approved. Thank you so much for your attendance. Thank you so much. 
Okay, uh, item 5H, which is our last planning item this morning, members, it's on page 157 to 195, it's page 2 of your amendment sheet, and uh, the site is 13, sorry, 313 Chapel Street, right opposite the cathedral. Okay, uh, Miss Stewart, uh, can I hear you good self? Uh, yes, can you hear me, Chair? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Uh, forward and back on, on the slides, please. There is a slight, oh, there we go, there is a slight delay on mine, so I'll, uh, I'll allow a few seconds between each slide just to, to let it catch up before no I start problem. to speak, if that's okay. No problem at all. You have the floor, Mr. Over to yourself. Thank you, Chair. Um, okay, so this application um, relates to a site within the Salford Central Master Plan area. Um, it's known as Plot E6, and it seeks permission for the erection of a part seven-storey and part nine-storey building to provide 96 one and two bedroom affordable apartments with a ground floor commercial unit, um, associated access, parking and public realm works. As is set out in the panel report, the application has been submitted as a full application rather than reserved matters as the development sits above the height parameters of the outline consent. So this slide shows the application site outlined in red. Uh, the site is bounded to the north by Chapel Street. To the west is Islington Way with the Vimto Gardens development beyond. To the south is North Star Drive. And to the east is Islington Street with plot E7, E8 of the Salford Central Master Plan area beyond, which is currently under construction but nearing completion. On the opposite side of Chapel Street is the Adelphi Bexler Square Conservation Area, as well as a number of listed buildings, which are shown black on the slide, and also some locally listed buildings, which are shown grey. So this slide puts the site in context with other Zone E plots that sit either side of the application site in front Chapel Street. The application building is shown here in yellow, um, at part seven and part nine stories. Vimto Gardens is shown here at five and six storeys, and Atelier is shown here at part five, six and seven storeys. Here we have some site photos looking in both directions along Chapel Street. Um, the application site sits in between um, Atelier, which is here, and Vimto Gardens here. It's marked by the, the arrow on the slides. And here we have some further photos of the application site itself, uh, which is currently being used as a site compound and marketing suite for Atelier. This slide shows the proposed site plan and also includes details of indicative landscaping. So the building itself would comprise of two adjoining blocks, which would sit within an L-shaped configuration. The building would be set back from Chapel Street and its frontage would be stepped. So the nine storey part of the building sits here uh, with the seven storey part of the building here, further set back from Chapel Street behind um, St. John's Place, um, which is a, a proposed public square. Some further usable areas of open space will be provided to the front here and to the side of the building, um, as well as a more private area for residents, which will be provided here to the rear of the building. The existing parking bays off Islington Way would be reorientated. Uh, one additional space would be provided. Uh, four would be um, electric vehicle charging um, spaces as well as two disabled uh, bays as well. Uh, on this slide, you can also see the ground floor internal layout with the four wheelchair accessible units here, a commercial unit here, front in Chapel Street, uh, back of house and refuse here, and internal cycle storage here. There's also some external cycle storage proposed um, up here to the top corner of the site um, and also here um, just outside the site on Chapel Street. Upper floors would follow a typical arrangement as is shown here and solar panels are proposed on the roof of each of the blocks um, as well as an area of plant on the roof of the nine storey block. Here are some commuter-generated images showing the elevation details and the building in a bit more context. 
This is the proposed front and side elevation to Chapel Street and Islington Street and some close-ups of the apartment entrance detail. This is the proposed rear elevation to North Star Drive, again with some close-ups in sections of the typical facade detailing. We can see the views of the cathedral up Islington Street, uh, framed by the building at Atelier, which sits on the right-hand side here, and the proposed building at the application site. And here we have the front and side elevation, which sits at the junction of Chapel Street and Islington Way. The building will be finished in a buff coloured brick with bronze powder coated aluminium window frames with perforated metal vents and matching spandrel panels where full height glazing isn't required. Brick feature panels are included within the elevation and at ground floor level and within these panels every other course would project 15 mil. A four leaf clover symbol from the cathedral is also proposed to be incorporated into the perforated panels. As touched upon earlier and as set out in the panel report, the proposed development includes public realm and landscaped areas and this slide shows the indicative details provided, which are generally considered acceptable with final details to be secured through the recommended landscape condition. So here this slide shows the proposals for St John's Place, uh, which is the public square which would sit to the um, northeastern corner of the site. Uh, it would open up the area directly opposite the cathedral and provide a place for people to sit and take in the cathedral. This, together with the other public realm and landscapes areas, are a big positive of the scheme, uh, with this level of landscaping and public areas rarely seen in apartment schemes, particularly in built-up areas such as this. The provision of St John's Place would also realise a long-term aspiration within the development framework, which identifies a place opposite Sulphur Cathedral as a new space to be provided. Again, these details are generally considered acceptable, but final details of planting, street furniture, etc. will be secured through the recommended landscape condition. So to conclude, the application site sits within Sulphur Central, which is an area that has seen significant transformation in recent years in light of the development of the Sulphur Central Master Plan. The 2009 hybrid application included this site and granted outline consent for a residential building with a mixed use at ground floor level, as is proposed here. As set out previously, the height parameters proposed under this application fall outside those of the outline consent, and as such, it's submitted as a full application rather than reserved matters. That said, the development continues with the thrust of the master plan and proposes a high quality building of good design and will provide active ground floor uses with residential above, as well as high quality public realm and landscaping and 100% affordable housing, um, as well as some accessible units. The development is considered to be appropriate in this setting and would add to the ongoing regeneration of the area. The application is therefore recommended for approval, subject to the conditions set down in the report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, Mr. Stewart. OK, then, uh, moving on to the members of the public. Uh, Mrs. Baldacino, Mrs. Baldacino, are you here to object? Janet, would you turn the microphone on? It's just the silver button, either one of them. Okay, so I'm this, is a, this is a microphone. Oh. Yeah, you can just speak normally. Yeah. You can sit down if you want to, and then just read this if you want to, and I'll just let you just tell you out. Because yeah. somebody asked me a question or anything, I just said I've come to oppose the... Uh... Yes, yeah, so this is your opportunity to say what you've written down here. Oh. So if you just speak to the room, this is the chair over here. Okay. Open this meeting to you, and I'll just be behind you here. Hello. 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 I'm, I'm the chair of the panel. Oh, uh, right, uh, thank you. I hear that you're here to object to this planning application on Chapel Street. Uh, all, all, us re all the residents, on behalf of the residents, you know, it's not the, not the club. No problem. It's I'm phone, they couldn't get through to nearly anybody, you know. I'm going to go back, sit there. And yeah. You've got 10 minutes to speak. Yeah. Is that okay? And that microphone's oh. on. And right. these are my colleagues who will make the decision today. Is that okay? Yeah. Well, I've been trying to uh, phone one of the colleagues. It's uh, a councillor or an MP, you know, and I've been phoning for over a week and I can't get through. <laughs> he said, 
it's uh, Rebecca Lombard, you know, when he's on the panel. Uh, right. But uh, I can't get through. Uh, okay, no problem. Uh, you speak to me and I'll hear oh, you loudly right. over there. Is that right. okay? Yeah, uh, but when I sit down, you start. Thank you. Right? Okay, Mrs. Borgino. Right, thank you. Uh, I'd like to oppose this big building, the, uh, this tall nine-storey building. We've, we've got buildings all, we're, this is the word, it's uh, overdevelopment of the area. And, the, you know, most of the residents have liked you to have a site inspection to show, that it, it's, you know, it's worse than New York. We've got all, all around us in the last few years. But uh, it's exactly facing Salford Cathedral. You know, I can see the front door. And that last bit of daylight that I can see, that's where they want to build this nine story. You know, so that's me, that personally, I can't, I won't get a bit of, like it was all this daylight, I've only got a little patch. And they want to build nine story. They've just built uh, six story, but you know, it's gone to seven because of the, they're going to have shop, the shops on, that's all done, and then we got this letter to say they're going to do a nine story where Shalimar was, that was just a shop, and living accommodation, you know, like one floor up. But it, and it's exactly facing Salford Cathedral, the front door there. And I thought, you know, and with nothing for the community, if they could put some green grass or a community place there, you know, where we, we're all sat in our flats doing nothing. And the kids don't know what to do with themselves, so they get into trouble. There's something like that that wants to go, you know, somewhere around there. But definitely not facing the front door of the cathedral, a great big nine-storey building, you know, more flats. It's not like hundreds, got, there's, a, there's a good few, couple of thousand gone up in the last few years. And we're all blocked in. And we've not, I've not got a bit of daylight, only that little patch now. And uh, what does it look? Oh, I don't need that. Uh, I don't need it. If it could have a site inspection, that's what I said to emphasise. The other two people wanted to come, they, they're ill with the flu. So it's, uh, I'm sure, you know, we definitely don't need a note. It's absolutely, if anybody knows Chapel Street, they'll know. It's just like New York now when you pass the cathedral. But there's that little space where Shalimar's was, that shop that was always open, and they want to build a nine-storey there. And it'll block, I mean, a three-storey, you know, for flats at the back. And that'll block the last bit of light out from my front uh, window. Uh, what else? But we could do with something like a bunga or community place for the, you know, to have uh, afternoon teas and some for the kids and grass. You know, we need some grass, not any more flats or apartments, they're called. Something for the community. Not with all, all these flats and you, you're locked in, you don't know what to do, and the kids don't know what to do. There's nowhere to go. We need somewhere nice there, uh, if somebody can think of something, you know, a nice community uh, building, you know, one or maybe two storey. And a garden all around it where they can, you can sit and uh, maybe a bit of playing area. I don't know what else to say. But that, please think about it. if you was there and you have your last bit of light blocked off. You know, we want something for the community. And the traffic. My God, if you've ever been up Chapel Street, it takes you an hour to go like 200 yards. And uh, my grandkids have stopped coming to see me because they can't get in. There's one way in and one way out, and it's jam packed. And it used to be like seven or eight different openings, you know, roads. We've got one onto Chapel Street where the co op is. And it's terrible. So we don't need a nine story building going up, you know, with hundreds more people and more cars. 
we've been waiting for this two years to finish these other buildings because we thought we're off. And then we got this letter through the door that they want to build another nine storey. It was all shocked to death. So if you're the planning department, something nice, you know, what you have in like a community in the, uh, in the country, you know, you have like a, a hall, a village hall or something. Something for the people and the kids, children and grass around it. Not another nine storey. So they've got two 14 storeys there. You know what's been there since the 60s, 1960s. Three, you know, and three storey, uh, two, three storey flats and got houses. And, that, but, and the last two years we've got hundreds of these, what they're asking for for nine storey. We've got them all over that little estate, jam packed. <coughs> and that's why they said, if you'd like a site inspection, please. And you'd see what we're living like. There's nothing at all for, for us to go on. And there's hundreds of these flats. Not hundreds, there's thousands now. As you're going towards Sainsbury's, you know, one after the other. You know, that's sky high. But if you consider, instead of the house, these, what you're going to live, flats, they're all going to be locked in. There's nowhere to, we need a bit of grass space or something. We don't need another nine storey, definitely. Everybody's against it, please. If you think about it, you know. Is that it, love? Thank you so much. What do we do now? Uh, if you could take a seat over there. Right. And we'll, we'll listen from the applicants, is that okay? Yeah. No problem. Of Members of the panel have heard you loud and clear. And please take a seat. I'll, I'll leave you to drink. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bollettino. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, moving on to the applicants, applicant supporters. Uh, Miss Dixon, I believe you're here on the applicant side. Miss Dixon, if you could elaborate a little on the on the green amenity surrounding the building, uh, and I'm not sure if you were involved with the uh, the previous build, the Artillier building, uh, and so if you could alleviate, uh, alleviate a little bit around what the impact of that is having on Islington Park, which is less than 100 metres away from this site, so uh, that would be most grateful. Uh, over to you yourself. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you all today. Um, my name is Kayleigh Dixon from DPP Planning, and I'm speaking in support of the application on behalf of the applicant, English Cities Fund. Um, the thorough report prepared by the case officer and the recommendation for approval is, is welcomed. Um, as you're aware, the site in question forms part of the Salford Central Master Plan, and this plot has outlined planning consent for a residential-led development within a set of approved development parameters. Um, this is for matters uh, such as height and footprint and unit numbers, things like that. So the principle of development is already established, but um, as highlighted within the panel report, part of the proposal does exceed the maximum height parameter <coughs> set out in the outline consent by two storeys, which has resulted in us submitting a, a new full plan application in lieu of a reserve matters one. Um, however, this doesn't alter the fact that the principle of development <coughs> is already established, but it has required careful consideration of other material planning considerations. The, the site itself is actually heavily constrained by below ground services, um, which can't be relocated in a viable way. Um, but the, the design team have sought to look for opportunities from these constraints. Um, so for example, the, the resulting layout is, um, <coughs> and the mass is set back from the cathedral, which provides a, a positive area of public realm for residents and visitors to use, to dwell in and to enjoy views of the this important heritage asset and um, council, the, the chair, the, this um, relates to what you touched on before about the sort of public realm and landscape and um, there is a large area of public space proposed in front of this building um, which relates back to long aspirations for um, a public square in this part of Salford under the development framework and as you mentioned the 
atelier scheme next door, uh, the applicants work and with the council in terms of linkages with Islington Park as well. <coughs> so although part of the building's mass is slightly um, above the outline parameter of seven storeys, we do believe that this adds variation to the street scene without it being overly dominant and I think that was demonstrated by the site photos that were shared within the officer's um, presentation. <coughs> Our um, client does acknowledge that there's been some concerns raised with regards to the impacts on existing residential amenity, particularly in regard to daylight and sunlight with the increased mass. Um, what I would say is to protect the interests of existing and future residents, we have engaged with um, qualified professionals to fully assess the proposal um, as set out in detail within the case officer's panel report. Um, and the, the result of this assessment has found that the existing and proposed amenity is not expected to be compromised in terms of loss of light um, when considering the urban context that it sits within. So overall, um, the proposed development is sustainably located. It's well designed and it will continue the delivery of the Salford Central Master Plan in a positive way. The scheme will provide much needed affordable homes, um, which has been discussed quite a lot in the meeting today, um, and it includes accessible dwellings on the ground floor. Um, it also includes the, the new public space adjacent to the cathedral, which is um, something I've touched on before. A new active frontage along Chapel Street via the ground floor commercial unit. Net gains for biodiversity. And it also aims to achieve passive house sustainability credentials, which is actually a very high standard um, of sustainability for reducing carbon footprint. So overall, um, on behalf of the applicant, I would respectfully ask members to um, approve this plan application. Thank you, Ms. Dixon. Thank you so much. Thank if there's no one else on the applicant's application side, it's just you yourself. That's it, thank you. Marvellous, no problem. And there's no ward council present to speak. Okay, members, over to yourselves. Uh, members, uh, I mean, uh, the, again, it's what's not to like you. We've got 100% affordable housing. It's passive house. It, the building defends itself. It's got public realm space right around it. It's got, and that's 24 seven accessible. The only barrier around the building is at the car park to uh, just, and it's just a single finger arm barrier. Everything else will say unfenced and it will allow people to flood into the place, use it 24 seven and be maintained in front of what is a beautiful cathedral. Uh, I do believe the sun goes around the other side of the site. So it goes around the back of Karen Horsley Court and off of Millwood Court. So uh, but I'll just bring the office in on that. Ms. Stewart, could, uh, do you have a, a, something to show the, 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 uh, the sunlight deviation, uh, what, this, what this development would bring? Uh, to I, I, I don't have um, a slide to show, unfortunately. Um, but the sun path would, would uh, it rises in the east and sets in the west. So you are correct that it would sort of come um, down the, the, the southern part of the building um, rather than to the north where the cathedral sits. Um, and I believe the, the resident um, who spoke earlier, uh, her property does sit to the, the southern side of the, um, of the application site. Let me just share it with you. Um, so that uh, the lady who spoke, I think, resides in this apartment block here, um, which, as you can see, sits to the, the south of the um, application site. And also the property sits side on, um, so there's no, no windows in in this gable here, um, there's some balconies, um, presumably for habitable space here, which, which face directly um, westwards. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, you've just triggered something uh, for me, Stuart. The, the, uh, the actual green piece of amenity right in front of the development that sits in just off Rodney Street, uh, that, that's going to stay in place as well, isn't it? Right opposite, so yeah. Okay, members, Councillor Kuzak, I see that you've, you clearly see I can collect the application. So. Oh, we've thanks, got Chair. Now. Oh, I'm back we, on again. We nearly had you in stereo then. So, oh no, it's going to be one of them. To me, to you, to you, to me. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, 
I, I understand the uh, residential objections uh, on, on, on this site. Um, however, I think the principle of development here is, uh, has already been uh, established. Uh, um, my, my question is to do with the orientation of the buildings. I noted in the uh, officer's report that it said that the developer was asked to change the uh, seven-storey element uh, for the nine-storey element and vice versa. Uh, so that the frontage along uh, Chapel Street um, was a seven-storey one rather than a nine-storey one and didn't, um, didn't feature in the views of the, um, of the cathedral in either direction. And it, it says that it wasn't viable to do that. Uh, I'd just like some explanation as to why it wasn't viable. Miss Stewart, why wasn't it viable to have the seven-storey element and the nine-storey element switch around? Um, as um, Ms Dixon um, alluded to in her um, discussion, there's a number of constraints that um, that have sort of formed the the siting of the of the building, um, which which can't be be moved. These are underground services which can't can't be relocated. Um, we did ask whether there could be some um, some change um, to those stories, just uh, in terms of the proximity then for the, the taller one for the cathedral. The response was that it was unviable, and it, it's due to the the number of units and the floor plates then, which would also have to be um, to be changed across both blocks if the if the uh, stories were swapped out. It's a floor print issue. Yeah, sorry about this. Uh, thanks, Chair. So, uh, do, is the viability around the fact that reorientation would have meant a reduced number of units, or is it simply due to the fact that it would require another design? Ms. Stewart? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Um, we we didn't sort of delve into too much detail on this point with the with the app applicants. Um, whether it's worth bringing um, Kayleen just to explain that in a little bit more more detail, because um, I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure on, uh, on on the answer to the question. No problem, Mister. Would you just come back for a quick factual answer for us? You just press this any silver button will do. That's the technique you need, Councillor Coos. That, that, that makes the microphone work. <laughs> Miss Dixon. Yeah, so the applicant was asked if they could swap the stories round, and as Adele's um, mentioned, the, the severe underground services has meant that we couldn't shift the building. But then in terms of swapping, because I think you're essentially asking, can the nine-storey bit be on the seven-storey bit? Um, and the, it, you're right, it is more of a footprint issue and the configuration would mean a loss of units which would make it unviable um, because in discussions with the, the potential uh, operator of this, the, the number of units were sort of set at that brief stage as, as to what they needed for it to be viable. Thank you, Ms Dixon. Thank you. Okay, well, Ms. Council of Yeah, sorry, Chair. Uh, just a quickie, really, is... I'm not happy with the way Chapel Street's gone, you know I'm not. Uh, I, I just think the designs and the, the finishes of the buildings, it, it just doesn't match in with the cathedral and it, it looks awful to be honest. And I just thought that this, if we do approve it, looks better than some of the other buildings that are on Chapel Street already. Uh, we've got a cathedral there that is a beautiful building uh, and as a city we don't make enough of it. It's great that we've now got St John's Gardens and we've got that sort of green space opposite the cathedral where people can sit because we don't make enough of our cathedral. Um, but it does concern me the way that Chapel Street's gone. I know it's too late to do anything now, but um, you know, there's been lots of comments from people as they travel along Chapel Street. How could you have let that happen? So I'm just putting my two pennies in. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Wormsham. I'm sure you're delighted to see the, uh, the green amenity in front of the cathedral. It was something that you asked for many moons ago, uh, and that there should be some green relief there and a garden. And I can see your good self and uh, the past Councillor Andrew sitting there, uh, taking in the ambiance over a coffee. 
and uh, I can see you both doing that. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, um, reading this yesterday, the blandifying of a chapel wharf. Um, yeah, I understand the, 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 we need the affordable housing. Can I have some clarification? Because I'm not really sure. The picture that I saw yesterday uh, when reading this, the light, I saw a picture of the cathedral full of light. Uh, I'm just not getting this, is, that's facing the cathedral and there was lots of light on it. What I'm getting, across the road, where the building's going to be, is that going to block the light? I have lighting issues, I just want clarification. Once the building's there, is that going to block the light? Because I didn't see a picture of, I saw it in gorgeous light, but uh, I've not seen it in reality. Uh, are you concerned about blocking the light of the cathedral? and um, the light issues for the residents. Okay, um, um, we, uh, the sun, uh, the, 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 the residents are on the south side of the building and the sun goes round the back of Arthur Millwood and Karen Ussie. So they're on, the, they're on the sunny side of the building, as you might say. So the, 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 if anything's likely to be affected from the loss of sunlight would be the cathedral. Miss Stewart, has, has that been taken? Uh, could you just help Councillor Hamilton with the impact yeah. of sunlight on the, uh, on the cathedral? That's no problem. There has been um, an overshadowing assessment carried out. Um, it relates more to the amenity space, which sits um, just just to the west of the um, the cathedral. But obviously, um, the impacts there would would be worse because that's the bit that sits across from the nine-storey elements. So there are details set out in the report in terms of that. It's on one uh, page, one hundred and seventy-nine. Uh, but basically, the overshadowing assessment. Um, to the, the cathedral area concludes that uh, it fully meets and exceeds the BRE target criteria for sunlight. Is that okay, Councillor Hampton? Is that okay? Okay, well, Councillor McCusker, then we've got Councillor Chesterton, and then we'll go to the vote if that's possible. Thanks, Chair. Um, I really like Chapel Street now. Um, I just remember what a disastrous dump it was, you know, uh, with practically a motorway running down the middle of the divide the place into two halves and then just crumbling buildings either side. So, um, however, I recognise what there does not compare with the beauty of the cathedral. Um, however, I, I like this design in that it really does step back. And presumably that helps with the light. It creates not only that green space, but you know, um, you know, the, the size of pavement there gives plenty of space. Um, yeah, as far as the objectives concerns, I've just lost, but no, I didn't. Um, as far as the objective is concerned, obviously there's Islington Park at the, at the side of the building. Um, this will create a new public realm facing the cathedral. Um, and then is there green space at, off East Lodge Lane as well? It, it just seems, I mean, obviously I'm a Nichols councillor. We've got the, one of the, the lowest areas of green space in the city. But from a Nichols perspective, that looks quite well served considering the meadow is just at the top of the way. Um, so, yeah, I, I like this. I can't... I, 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 someone moved this already, by the way. No, can, can I therefore formally move uh, this chair? Yeah, just to labour the point about the, 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 the public realm spaces, right from this site, if you take a 100 metre walk less from past the school, you hit the Islington neighbourhood games area. We don't call it a mugger. It's just not. Uh, and that, that's, that was put in years ago. Uh, and then there's also a play park there as well, with swings and around that, and that's grassed. Uh, and there's, there's a grass thingy. Uh, I can't allude to what's coming in the future, because, uh, but, but yeah, the, the, there wants to be even more green amenity. So, so yeah, within, it's, it, for an inner city, it's very well served for, for green amenity here. Uh, so, and then right opposite, there is community rooms. There's the Angel Centre, which is which is very well used. So it's all the, it, 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 so, uh, Council President, I've made a terrible attempt at getting you into this meeting today. I have a slightly lazy eye on this side, and I, I can't always see this. So. So could you wear a brighter top next time? Maybe a pink shirt or pink... Yeah, go, go magenta, city colours, next time. Um, so I'm going to slightly agree with Councillor Warmersham in that I think this building looks almost exactly like every other building on Chapel Street, which I don't necessarily consider to be a good thing. I wonder how quickly these buildings are going to date and whether they're all going to look like they're all built at the, in the space of the same five years or whatever. 
Um, I think also as well, exercise a little bit of caution over the brick panels. I've seen quite a few examples where brick panels have been used a few years ago and they're starting to crumble already, so, but that's just a word of caution. Um, I had one small question about the cycle storage being glazed. From a security point of view, for crime prevention, is that a great idea? Or is that going to look like a, here's a showroom, take your pick. Um, we might want to consider some kind of obscuring the glass on that side so that people can't see in. Um, but also I'd like to, going back to Councillor Cusack's point, because I'd, I'd spotted the same thing, this swapping the seven stories to the nine stories. When I'm looking at the floor plans, I can't see a reason why you can't do that. And I don't see why you should lose units. Because the nine-story section, the part of the nine-story section we'd want to move is smaller than the part of the seven-story section that we want to put it on top of. So I don't see how we're losing units or how that might make the development unviable. Okay. Uh, uh, going back to the cycle store, uh, do, do you want to give me a challenge for that? Uh, so would you, if, you know, we'd like to approve this application, so if it is approved, uh, would, you, would, you, would you delegate to a senior officer in consultation with the chair the landscaping condition, the materials, which is the brick slips, and the cycle store design? Would, would that be okay? Uh, and then, uh, Miss Dixon, uh, Miss Stewart uh, did kind of like give you the, the bat in here. Uh, Councillor Tresidon is having a look at the design floor plan layout, what, what he's seen in his report, and, and he's, not, he's not quite getting how it's weighed up to shift those two elements of that ground. Would you please give it another go? Would that be, that be okay? No explanation. And then we'll get to a decision. Is that okay? Uh, Chair, could I just come, come in there as, as well while Kayleigh's just getting, getting organised to, to speak? Um, just to say, obviously, we, we did explore that just to see if that, if that was an option. Um, one thing to, to consider, which obviously has not been considered through this application, if those stories were to be swapped, um, then the nine-story element would then be obviously closer to the residential apartments at Atelier and also to, to those, um, those residents to the, the south, um, which is obviously higher. Um, so would need further consideration in terms of impact on, on residents there if that was to, to happen. Okay, so, so on mass wise, it would have a more uh, negative impact on the low rise residential uh, in mass. It would scale. do, and that, that impact has not, not been yeah. assessed. Um, it was purely a question sort of throughout the course of the application um, on heritage matters, um, and because we didn't um, get to that point where it was going to change, there was no further assessment undertaken in terms of, of residents. So, um, that, yeah, just to make members aware, that's all. Okay. Okay, okay Councillor Tresidon. Yeah, just to make members aware, that's all. Okay. Okay, okay Councillor Tresidon, I think what you've teased out there is that there is some design considerations that has gone in with these seven and nine switch around, not just on the viability side, which Councillor Kuzak turned out. And I, 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 I think, I don't think we really want to put more stories in front of lower development and also sh shade possibly more the cathedral so but do you, do you want to hear miss dixon again yes miss dixon oh it's a good time. hi um i mean i don't think i can really add much more than what adele said to be honest and um, my background i'm not an architect so i can't really comment on you know the exact reasoning for how units are sort of shifted around um, but you know Adele's right that there are more reasons other than viability to consider in terms of swapping the mass in um, we've obviously we've had um, sort of views assessments done as well in terms of how we think the development sits with views of the cathedral from various vantage points and the conclusion of those reports is that where the nine story bit sits is most appropriate in those terms as well as residential amenity and <coughs> separation distances and things like that as well. Thank you Ms Dixon, thank you. Thank uh, you. We, we have what we have before us, if we don't like the design we have the option to be able to push it back uh, and so it, it's designs all in the, behold, in the eye of the beholder. Councillor. So just one more, um, so I, the, I could understand arguing against the uh, massing terms and visibility. If it's the viability, I just couldn't quite understand. That, that doesn't seem to be a particularly strong reason. One thing, I, if I can say, can I just say how pleased I am that they haven't put a gym, a private gym, on the ground floor on Chapel Street again? It's one of my big bugbears. Gym, private gyms on ground floors, big no-no. So I'm ple very pleased it's not on this plan. Thank you.
they're not working out, are they? They really aren't, no, I agree. You know, there'll, there'll be a movement after this pandemic, there'll be no gyms, there will be no. <laughs> Councillor Hamilton, you've had a, you've had a, you've had a shot, you're going to have another one, come on, feel free. Yeah, it's just a comment, really, referring to my good friend, my uncle, McCusker, Councillor McCusker. Yeah, I don't think that kind of language helps in the sense of it was a dump. There was a lot of Salford areas that were a dump, and I just don't think it helps in what we're discussing today. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, uh, you have a right of reply. I mean, um, um, we, we, normally get, we normally get a good, good volley going across the room because I'm looking at. But he's uh, been too polite today, Councillor. Yeah, uh, Peter's in the eye of the beholder chair. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay, members. Uh, a healthy debate. That's what we need, and that's what we should be having. It's uh, teasing things out, and that's what uh, that's what that's what we're here to do. Okay, members. It's been moved, but not seconded, for oh, for approval. Uh, and would you be so kind to delegate the landscaping condition, the materials condition, and the cycle store design slash materials to a senior officer in, in consultation with the chair? Right, yeah, some homework for me. All in favour of that, please show. Any abstentions? And any against? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the application has been approved. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, moving right on, members. It's, uh, are you happy to approve, well, note the delegated report, item six? Do I hear ye? Yep. Uh, oh, Phil? Get Councillor Chosen, sorry. So we've gone back to John's very, very beginning point about the, the ward names. Like some of the applications were received in July and they've still got the old ward names. Indeed. Uh, the, uh, we will, we're quite happy. If you submit a Freedom of Information Act to the officers, you will see the day after the elections were made, I sent an email to ask for us to get on it. And then the reply was, we're on it, but the people who need to make the change, because they couldn't make the change, weren't on it until mid-summer sometime. Mr. Yeah. Mr. yeah. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I think members need to understand that behind the scenes, the system needs to understand how we can make those changes. And it's not a simple, well, we'll just change and the day after we can change it. Uh, and as Chair has made it clear, a lot of work had to be undertaken in the background with the help of our IT colleagues to actually update the back office system to read the new ward boundaries. And that was done, Chair, as quickly as possible. I, I know it's very frustrating, um, but that's, that's just the, the reality of it, Chair. Patience, members, patience. <laughs> Sorry, it, thank you, Councillor. Thank you. It's really appreciate it. And, uh, okay, uh, planning appeals. We've received one planning appeal. Happy to note that, members. Is that okay? Noted. Fabulous. Okay, Mr. Williams, uh, I'll thank the public for their attendance today. Uh, I'd like to thank Helen, uh, Gemma, and Carolina for all their help, uh, uh, helping members of the public and making this meeting run smoothly for us. So, thank you for that. Uh, Bert, would you tell us when we're no longer live?